As martial arts were in their nascent stages, monstrous and exotic beasts threatened the very existence of human warriors, forcing them to surrender and retreat. But then, Lucian's consciousness traversed time and space, transporting him 10,000 years ahead in a dream world, where the most rudimentary of physical training techniques had evolved into a highly advanced form, thousands of times more effective than before. In this distant future, Lucian discovered martial arts scriptures that had been lost to time. The martial arts civilization had peaked in those 10,000 years, but tragically, humanity was no more to carry on the tradition. Lucian became the sole inheritor of this ancient legacy. The story unfolds in a world ravaged by a catastrophe, once the beautiful planet lay in ruins and a gaping hole within the heavens, from which a legion of monsters and creatures poured forth. The traces of humanity had long since vanished, leaving behind nothing but a barren wasteland. Amidst the desolation, however, there stood a lone figure, a man of immense power and unshakable conviction. He stood before the colossal creature with a calm demeanor, his hand held firmly behind his back with otherworldly energy coursing through his veins, the man's eyes blazed in bright light, and with a swift, fluid motion, he unleashed a devastating blast, completely annihilating anything in his way. Lucian jolted awake in the middle of class, his eyes bleary and unfocused. The taunting laughter of his classmates echoed in his ears, even the teacher sneered at him with contempt. The teacher pointed an accusatory finger at Lucian, his voice dripping with disdain. Claiming that no one will ever hire Lucian as a bricklayer, since the basic requirement of blood energy level is 0.8 for a bricklayer. As the class finally ended, Lucian's friend Ming approached him with concern for his well-being. He offered to take Lucian to the internet cafe and treat him to some snacks and games, hoping to lift his spirits. But Lucian was too drained from the constant nightmare that had been bothering him for quite some time. Unbeknownst to Lucian, fate had conspired to transport him into this isekai, he had been a diligent student, focused on acing his university entrance exam, but now he had to face an entirely different test of survival. Lucian couldn't help but notice the similarities between his old world and this new one. The only difference was the incredible level of martial arts that existed in this world. As Lucian gazed upon the giant screen broadcasting the recent victory of the Eighth Legion, successfully defending another wave of monsters, just then, his reverie was shattered by the sight of a delivery woman carrying an enormous stack of packages with effortless ease. Lucian couldn't believe his eyes and envied her power. The sun was slowly sinking into the horizon, casting a warm glow over the city as Lucian trudged his way back to his old apartment. His eyes fell upon his mother in the living room, tenderly applying medicinal patches to his father's back. Despite the physical pain, his parents' faces lit up at the sight of their son. His father quickly got dressed, but the bandages and patches on his body betrayed the immense effort he had put in to provide for his family. With a gentle smile, Lucian suggested that his father invests in an acupuncture machine to alleviate his pain and promote better circulation. But his father, ever the stoic and strong-willed, simply flexed his bicep and joked that he was made of steel and could withstand any pain. Suddenly, his father took out two small containers, which he presented to Lucian. It was a new supplement that cost a staggering $20,000, a fortune for a family like theirs. Overwhelmed by his father's selfless gesture, Lucian struggled to hold back his tears and bit his lips. As Lucian's parents questioned whether his blood energy levels had reached the desired 0.85 mark, he felt a knot of anxiety form in his stomach. He sprinted to his room without wasting a moment, knowing that every second counted. With determination etched on his face, Lucian immediately began the bodice strengthening technique. The technique was a fusion of ancient yoga, martial arts, and judo, expertly adapted to create a powerful and effective method for beginners to build a solid foundation. Lucian took a deep breath before launching into an explanation of the cataclysmic event that had changed the world. Three centuries ago, the world had been plunged into chaos as monstrous creatures erupted from the sky and the ground, rendering modern weapons useless. In the face of this unprecedented threat, humanity had undergone a genetic mutation, unleashing unimaginable power and ushering in a new age of martial arts. But even with these newfound abilities, the human race had found themselves at a massive disadvantage against the monsters that threatened their very existence. Cities fell on a daily basis, and the human race was forced to retreat and regroup. 
After three consecutive rounds of the grueling body strengthening technique, Lu Xing's energy had been completely sapped. Despite his best efforts, his blood energy level had remained unchanged, sweat poured down his face as he struggled to catch his breath, his determination unwavering even in the face of such adversity. He knew that his parents had sacrificed so much for him, and he refused to let them down now. Grimacing with effort, he slowly rose to his feet, but as he stood there, wavering on unsteady legs, he suddenly felt a wave of dizziness sweep over him. The world spun around him, followed by his collapsing onto the ground. Lucian woke up, but what he saw around him was not the familiar surroundings of his bedroom. Instead, he found himself in a desolate wasteland of his familiar nightmare. Lucian tried to wake himself up from this nightmare but to no avail. And then, a zombie leaped toward Lucian, its gruesome mouth inches away from his face. In the past few nights, Lucian had run from this monster in terror, but this time, something inside him snapped. With a primal roar, he unleashed all the energy he could muster into his legs and kicked the zombie away, not content to stop there, Lucian grabbed a nearby rock and began beating the undead creature mercilessly, striking it again and again until its body finally gave way, leaving behind a strange black liquid that oozed toward him. As he watched the viscous liquid approach, a torrent of unfamiliar memories flooded Lucian's mind, vivid and disorienting. He saw an unknown man, speaking to a friend on the beach, about his desire to join the elite defensive squad. The man soon donned a military uniform and became a member of the prestigious base number 1359, where he underwent rigorous training. Then, a chaotic memory of the base being breached by monstrous creatures. In this sudden onslaught of memories, Lucian felt his heart racing, struggling to come to grips with the deluge of information. Lucian stood in disbelief, wondering how he had managed to retain the memories of the men he had just defeated in their zombie form. His hand trembled uncontrollably, unaware of the powerful aura surrounding him, just as he was lost in thought, a sudden attack came from behind. Without missing a beat, Lucian spun around and with a single fluid motion, snapped the head off the zombie with graceful movement, sending its body collapsing to the ground in a heap. As the lifeless corpse began to dissolve into a dark, viscous fluid, Lucian felt a strange sense of energy pulsing through his veins. With a sudden rush of power coursing through his body, Lucian realized that he not only had the ability to retain the memories of those he defeated, but he could also absorb their power. Lucian couldn't believe what he was experiencing, he remembered that he was in the realm of his dreams, he took a deep breath and wondered only if everything was real. Despite the surreal nature of his dream, Lucian couldn't shake the feeling that there was something important he needed to discover. The memory of the military base number 1359 lingered in his mind once again, teasing him with the possibility of unlocking the secrets of this strange world. Suddenly, the dream became disoriented, he was pulled back into the real world, where his sister was calling him to dinner. Lu Qing He the only younger sister of Lu Xiong, took a closer look at Lu Xiong, currently glistening with sweat, the chiseled body underneath the shirt made her blush, she quickly turned around and walked away. Lu Xiong recollected the days of his youth when he and his sister were inseparable, but the dynamics between them shifted dramatically after the first evaluation test, which showed the result to be an astonishing blood energy level of 1, and power level of 100, it was not unexpected, given that his sister was a prodigy, destined for a brilliant future. Lucian took a deep breath, then he gazed upon his reflection in the mirror and beheld his exquisitely sculpted physique, feeling not a shred of exhaustion, and all the memories and power he gained from the dream were carried over, causing him to ponder if he could truly manifest the power of his subconscious dreams into the real world. Shrugging off his ruminations, Lucian walked over to the dinner table, at the table, he devoured the food, one bowl of rice after another, as if his gut were akin to a black hole. With nothing left on the table, he nervously withdrew his arms, but his father snatched his bowl and implored his mother to cook more rice and prepare additional dishes. The father seemed elated by his son's great appetite, and even his sister beamed a graceful smile. Following dinner, Lucian strode towards a nearby martial arts academy, where the instructor was a level 4 martial artist and a well-known figure in the city. The hierarchical structure of martial arts is as follows. A level 1 martial artist is deemed standard if their blood energy level is 1.5, and battle strength stands at 150. 
a level 2 martial artist surpasses this with a blood energy level of 15 and a battle strength of 1500. A level 3 martial artist ups the ante with a blood energy level of 100 and a battle strength of 10,000, while a level 4 martial artist must exceed a blood energy level of 200 and a battle strength of 100,000. As Lushing approached the reception desk, he inquired about undergoing a test to assess his blood energy level and battle strength. Despite her awareness that he may not hail from a wealthy background, the receptionist maintained her professionalism. In the training room, Lucian rested his hand on a gleaming crystal ball to gauge his blood energy level. To his astonishment, it had skyrocketed to 0.963, a significant improvement from his previous score of 0.7. Sensing an opportunity to prove himself, he turned his attention to another device, curious about his battle strength. He took a deep breath and assumed the combat form he had memorized from the recollections of two fallen soldiers. With fluid movements, he struck out, and his battle strength registered an impressive 113. The magnitude of his improvement within a mere hour left Lushing incredulous. He pondered what heights he could achieve if he spent a full 10 hours honing his abilities within the dream realm. As he lay in bed, staring blankly at the ceiling and counting a menagerie of more than 10,000 sheep, he found himself unable to fall asleep, frustrated and restless, he rose and flipped on the light switch. Resolving to undertake some additional exercises, he assumed his stance, preparing to perform the body strengthening technique. But something felt odd, he executed unfamiliar movements, doing these movements subconsciously as if channeling the memory of the fallen soldier. As Lucian continued to implement the new movements, he discovered that there were over 200 additional maneuvers. Every time he practiced, he felt a distinct surge of energy coursing through him. It was not only the body strengthening technique that benefited from this new knowledge, his breathing technique also experienced a noticeable enhancement. A single session felt like it had granted him years of training results, leaving him astounded at his newfound prowess. As Lucian completed the entire technique, he experienced a sensation akin to his soul being wrenched from his body, he felt extreme hunger, and his body's water content seemed to have evaporated. It was clear to him that regular food would not suffice, he required high-quality supplements to maintain his newfound strength. However, the cost of these supplements was astronomical, and he recognized that he would need to find a means of earning money to fund his ongoing growth. The next day, Lucian found himself in the school gym, ready for the combat lesson. The teacher, Mr. Zhang, was a level 2 martial artist who had faced a monster head-on and bore the scars to prove it. However, Lucian couldn't help but feel that the movements and techniques Mr. Zhang was presenting were too simplistic, and lacked power compared to what he had learned in his dreams. As Mr. Zhang finished his demonstration, he called upon one of the most popular students in the school, Yang, to spar with him. Yang was not only handsome but also the top student in his class, and his family was incredibly wealthy. Yang had become quite the supplement connoisseur, and his blood energy level had soared to an impressive 1.2. After sparring, Mr. Zhang praised Yang's movements, promising additional feedback after class. But despite the teacher's compliments, Yang couldn't help but sneer at the words in his mind. Mr. Zhang then asked if anyone was brave enough to spar with Yang, but all the students avoided eye contact, leaving him disappointed. However, just as Mr. Zhang's disappointment began to show, his gaze met Lu Sheng's piercing stare. In Lu Sheng's eyes, Yang could see a formidable aura one that he had only ever witnessed in those who had tasted the bitter reality of death. Ming desperately tried to persuade Lu Xing to forfeit, fearing that his friend would suffer serious injuries. However, Lu Xing merely smiled and reassured Ming that he had nothing to worry about. As he stood in the gym, Yang arrogantly raised his hand and sneered at Lu Xing, warning him to steer clear of his hand lest it shatters. Undeterred, Lucian graciously thanked Yang for his advice and declared that he was ready to fight. Suddenly, Yang lunged at him with the intent of ending the match with a single punch. But much to his astonishment, Lucian effortlessly evaded the attack and landed a precise blow to Yang's face, sending him hurtling to the opposite end of the room. As Mr. Zhang frantically rushed over to check on Yang's well-being, the other students looked on in shock and awe. It was inconceivable that Yang had been defeated with a single punch. 
Yang has quickly whisked away from the gym on a stretcher, leaving behind a stunned and bewildered crowd. Lusheng, meanwhile, felt a sense of remorse for his actions and apologized to Mr. Zhong for what had transpired. To his surprise, Mr. Zhong remained silent for a few moments before placing a reassuring hand on Lusheng's shoulder. After a brief exchange, Mr. Zhong invited Lusheng to his office, the office was simple, with only the potted plant and a battle strength testing machine. With a stern expression on his face, Mr. Zhong demanded to know if Lusheng had been using any illegal steroids or performance-enhancing drugs, which were strictly prohibited by the school due to their damaging effects on the body, demanding Lusheng to prove it. In response, Lusheng calmly rested his hand on the crystal ball a sudden jolt of electricity filled the room, and the machine displayed a blood energy level of 1.532, effectively classifying Lusheng as a level 1 martial artist. Mr. Zhong was taken aback by this revelation. The mere term, prodigy, seemed insufficient to capture the immense talent possessed by Lu Sheng, who at the age of just 18 had already achieved the rank of a formal level 1 martial artist. Mr. Zhong struggled to gather his thoughts when he was suddenly jolted out of his reverie by a loud noise. The next thing he knew, the battle strength testing machine was in pieces, as was the potted plant. Despite being saddened by the loss of his beloved plant, Mr. Zhong couldn't help but be awestruck by Lu Sheng's incredible strength. After a moment of stunned silence, Mr. Zhong learned that just two weeks prior, Lu Sheng had only possessed a blood energy level of 0.8. He leaped to his feet in disbelief, amazed that Lu Sheng had managed to achieve such incredible feats in just a fortnight. Mr. Zhong eagerly asked if Lu Sheng was from a renowned family or if he had been taught by a grandmaster. To his surprise, Lu Sheng revealed that he was neither born into nobility nor had he received any formal training. Mr. Zhong reflected on his own past experiences, reminiscing about how he had become a level 2 martial artist before joining the army. He remembered the lessons he had learned on the battlefield, where he had come to the realization that people like him could never hope to triumph over the monsters. The sheer strength and power of those beasts were beyond human comprehension and the only individuals capable of standing against them were those with even greater strength, individuals like Lu Sheng. Taking a deep breath, Mr. Zhang suggested that based on Lu Sheng's remarkable abilities, he should be placed in the elite class and given access to the very best educational resources available. However, Lu Sheng politely declined the offer, as he knew that no amount of education could compare to the opportunities he could create in his dreams. As Mr. Zhong continued to implore Lu Sheng, he spoke with an air of conviction that bordered on the theatrical. He assured Lu Sheng that the school would always have his back, but Lu Sheng, wary of empty promises, made two firm requests, a scholarship application and the freedom to attend class on his own terms. Mr. Zhong seemed to understand Lu Sheng's struggle but he quickly regained his composure and nodded sagely. He knew that obtaining a scholarship would take some time, so he took matters into his own hands. With a flourish, Mr. Zhang produced his bank card and handed it to Lu Sheng, telling him to pay him back whenever he could. Lu Sheng was taken aback by this unexpected display of generosity. As Lu Sheng walked out of Mr. Zhang's office, his heart was racing with anticipation. The prospect of encountering another prodigy was enough to send shivers down his spine. To think that there was someone else out there with level 2 martial arts battle strength at the tender age of 18 was simply mind-boggling. He saw the young man as a secret weapon, a powerful asset that could stun the other schools on exam day. But it wasn't just about winning a competition, Mr. Zhong had grander aspirations for Lu Sheng. He spoke of that place, a hallowed ground that had remained elusive for so many years. As Lu Sheng stood before the imposing gates of the Ren Xin Pharmacy, he couldn't help but feel a pang of envy as he watched a mother purchase expensive supplements for her daughter. He knew all too well the harsh reality of the martial arts world, that wealth and privilege often paved the way for success. He was all too aware of the obstacles in his path. His thoughts turned to his younger sister, who was still trapped in the same cycle of poverty and hardship dragged down by him, in that moment, Lu Xing felt like a fish trapped in a small tank, yearning for the vast ocean beyond. But he couldn't help but cling to the comfort and familiarity of his water tank. With a newfound sense of purpose, Lu Xing felt as though he had broken through the confines of his old life and stepped into a brave new world. The opportunities that lay ahead of him were boundless, and he was determined to seize them with both hands. 
It was as if he had broken through a bottleneck that had been holding him back. His memories, techniques, and combat experience now seemed clearer than ever before, and he was able to absorb them as his own. As he walked through the bustling streets of the city, Lucian couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and determination. With a sense of purpose burning in his heart, Lucian purchased an acupuncture machine for his father, supplements for his sister, and groceries for his mother. In Lucian's dream realm, he moved with the grace of a seasoned warrior, effortlessly taking down another zombie with a single swift strike. The memories that flooded his mind led him ever closer to his destination, base 1359. As he battled wave after wave of the undead. Finally, he arrived at the base itself and was awestruck by the massive walls that surrounded it. The walls were at least 20 meters thick, and Lucian couldn't help but wonder what kind of attack could possibly breach such fortifications. If this world, with its advanced martial arts and evolved civilization, was still so vulnerable in the face of the monsters, what hope was there for his own world? As he explored the city within the walls, Lucian's eyes were drawn to a towering building that seemed to be the command center. Within its walls, he caught a glimpse of a man dressed all in white, his face expressionless, and with only one arm. Out of nowhere, Lucian felt an immense surge of killing intent, it was as if the very air itself had thickened with the weight of this impending danger, the lethal energy emanating from the commanding center shook him on the ground. As Lucian stood there, still reeling from the shock of the man's killing intent, he knew in his gut that he shouldn't linger in that place. He retreated slowly, eyes darting around for any sign of danger, and eventually stumbled upon a room unlike any other he had seen in the base. As he approached a machine in the center of the room, his hand rested on the machine, and suddenly it sprang to life, emitting a soft hum. A moment later, a holographic image flickered into existence before him, the image of a female AI. Lucian was stunned when he heard the woman speak his language. The AI introduced herself as a product from the Tian Hang Tech, 16th generation support artificial intelligence. Her name is Ai, who is responsible for the network in base 1359, Lucian requested to see the most recent news. He couldn't help but wonder what other secrets lay hidden within this mysterious base. As soon as Lucian made his request, Ai sprang into action. With the speed and efficiency that only an artificial intelligence could muster, she conjured up a series of tabs that displayed the latest and greatest news from around the galaxy. I was a 16th generation support AI from Tian Heng Tech, and her programming was second to none. The first tab that popped up was a doozy, in June of the Marshall Year 11024, Base 1359 had successfully launched its 58th exploration spaceship in search of a suitable planet. But the news wasn't all good. The second tab that appeared informed Lucian that in July, Base 105 had fallen. It was a stark reminder that even with all their technology and martial prowess, humanity was still vulnerable to the dangers of the monsters. And speaking of martial prowess, the third tab that I summoned up was a real shocker. Apparently, General Sun Kang had just become the 472nd level 10 martial artist. Lucian was amazed, he had no idea that there were so many level, 10 martial artists out there. And yet, even with all that power, humanity was still unable to protect its own planet, forcing them to abandon it. Lucian's heart sank as he absorbed the devastating news, the human civilization had been completely wiped out. No reports or signals were coming from the exploration spaceship, indicating that there was no hope for their survival. It was a stark reminder of the harsh realities of the universe, where even the mightiest civilizations could be reduced to nothing in the blink of an eye. With a heavy heart, Lucian turned to I for some solace. He asked her to provide him with the history of this planet, hoping to learn something from their demise. As the data streams began to flow, as he delved deeper into the planet's past, Lucian's shock only grew. The timeline of events that I was rendering for him was eerily similar to the history of his own world. Monsters erupting from all over the world, the emergence of the first martial artist with inter power in the 34th martial art year, and the establishment of the martial art association, all of these were events that had happened in Lucian's own world as well. Astonished and disoriented, Lucian came to the realization that the events he had just witnessed were not a glimpse of an alternate world, but a shocking revelation about the fate of his own world, thousands of years in the future. A chill ran down his spine as he contemplated the implications of this knowledge. But even in the face of such bleak prospects, Lucian refused to lose hope. 
perhaps this was just a coincidence or a parallel universe, with a renewed sense of purpose, Lu Xiong turned his attention to gathering more information. He asked Ai to search for personal details about himself and his family, but his hopes were soon dashed when he discovered that he had passed away at a young age, just 28 years old, in the martial year 325. His curiosity was piqued, and he then attempted to search for information about his younger sister. But he was thwarted by the system, which demanded that he prove his gene blood before he could register for access. Puzzled and frustrated, Lu Xiong wondered how he could provide the necessary blood sample. At that moment, I came to the rescue, biting onto Lu Xiong's finger and collecting the required blood sample. Lu Xiong couldn't help but be amazed at the sheer wildness of the future where even artificial intelligence had become capable of such unorthodox behavior. As Ai's expression changed and red windows started popping up, Lucian couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. But before he could even ask, his personal information was suddenly refreshed, revealing that he had been a level 4 martial artist, a top graduate of the White River Academy, and a proud alumnus of the White River Marshall University. After graduation, he joined the army and valiantly fought in battle until his untimely death at the age of 37 in the martial year of 334. Lucian was dumbfounded. He had always believed that he was a prodigy, destined for greatness and fame. But now he realized that he was just one among many, a small cog in the vast machinery of history didn't even cause a small rabble. Lucian looked at the details with a discerning eye, and to his dismay, he discovered some flaws. The record showed that he had achieved a commendable score in the exam, although a decent score if just solely relying on basic training. He was certain that if he incorporated the ability of his dream realm, his scores would skyrocket to unprecedented heights. Lucian, being an unparalleled warrior, was not content with mediocrity. He knew that he was destined for greatness and that his future was not confined to this mundane reality. Lucian had an unyielding conviction within him to become the strongest person and be the person who alters history. He aspires to be more than a mere spark, but rather the catalyst that sets the world ablaze. The following day, Lucian explained to his mom that he can now learn from home, no longer have to go to class. Both his sister and his mom were skeptical. After finishing his breakfast, he went back to his room to train. Lu Ching He stared at her brother, she felt that he had changed a lot, although she doesn't know how to explain it, but her brother surely felt more mysterious now. After seeing what he had seen in his dream realm, he knew there were no time to waste, and he must climb to the top as fast as he can, and in search of a way to change the future, back in the dream realm, Lu Xing requested I to all notes, books and training methods related to martial arts, Lu Xing had to narrow it down to the ones just suitable for his own level. After filtering, there were three top selected choices, all written by level 11 martial artists. One is the basic stellar body enhancing technique, the second was a natural breathing technique, lastly was the crystal meditation technique, all part of the Spark program. It was as if a veil had been lifted from Lucian's eyes, revealing the secrets of the martial arts world. These top tier martial artists had foreseen the impending doom of the world and had preserved the essence of their lifelong crafts hoping that someone would continue their legacy. Lucian wasted no time and immediately delved into the three selected techniques. The stellar body enhancing technique was a profound method that set the human body into a micro-universe, strengthening every part of the body and imbuing every cell with the power of a star. The natural breathing technique allowed its practitioners to absorb the power of different elements, enhancing their physical capabilities. Lastly, the crystal meditation method was used to bolster mental fortitude and make one more resilient to stress and adversity, thereby allowing them to train more effectively. But after waking up from his dream realm, he noticed that the techniques had purified his body, flushing out all toxins. Lucian is also preparing to use the formula to craft his own supplements. The next day, Lucian arrived at the White River Academy. Mr. Zhang greeted him warmly but reminded him to attend at least one class per week. He made his way to the pharmacy, determined to rent a room for his supplement crafting. Despite several rejections, Lucian persisted. Mr. Zhang saw the fire in his eyes and personally funded him an additional 50,000, giving him the means to purchase everything he needed. Lucian knew that he needed to pay the favor back one day, just when Lucian was about to give up on finding a room, fate intervened. He stumbled upon a quiet pharmacy, 
the cashier was deeply indulged in live stream and told Lucian just grab whatever he needs. Lucian managed to catch the cashier's attention, and after some clever bribery, he was granted use of a room for three hours. Donning his lab coat, Lucian began his work. He mixed and measured, using techniques from shows like Rick and Morty and Full Metal Alchemist to create his ultimate supplement. Lucian held his final product in his hands. It was a supplement unlike any other, containing rare and powerful knowledge from 10,000 years in the future. Lucian Boldy gingerly brought the supplement to his lips, eagerly awaiting the promised effects. However, as he gulped down the liquid, he was dismayed to feel nothing at all. Was this yet another worthless elixir? But then, a sudden jolt coursed through his chest, sending him reeling to the ground in agonizing pain. His body convulsed as he cried out in torment, the veins in his neck bulging with the strain. For several endless minutes, Lucian writhed on the floor, unable to do anything but endure the excruciating sensations tearing through him. But then, as abruptly as it had started, the torment subsided, leaving him gasping and drenched in sweat. Despite the searing agony he had just experienced, Lucian was astounded by the effectiveness of the supplement. Not only had it bolstered his blood energy levels, but it had also worked wonders on his complexion, leaving his skin glowing with a newfound radiance. However, Lucian was suddenly interrupted by the urgent knocking of the cashier at the door. With no time to spare, the young man gestured frantically to Lucian to flee through the back exit, warning him that the owner had returned. As the owner strode into the lab, her expression was a seething mask of frustration and disappointment. She had always known that the supplement industry was cutthroat and unforgiving, but now more than ever she was acutely aware of the need to stay on the cutting edge. She thought bitterly of her family, whose stubborn adherence to outdated ideologies had ultimately led to their downfall. It was only by embracing change and innovation that one could hope to succeed in this ruthless market. The cashier, nervously fidgeting in the corner, offered a timid greeting as the owner swept past him, her heart sank as she noticed the stains on her lab coat, and she rounded on the hapless young man with a withering glare. Have you let someone into my lab, she demanded, her voice cold and sharp as a blade. The cashier stammered and stuttered, unable to offer a coherent response. With a snarl of frustration, the owner fired him on the spot, as she began to tidy up the lab. Her eyes fell on the scattered remnants of Lucian's supplements, with a sudden surge of curiosity, she scooped up the tiny droplets. To her astonishment, she discovered that even a single drop of the supplement was astonishingly powerful. The owner then dashed out of the shop in hot pursuit of the cashier, whose as the cashier turned towards the sound of the approaching footsteps, his heart leaped with excitement at the sight of the owner sprinting towards him. Her lithe figure and flowing hair seemed to cast a spell over him, and he imagined that perhaps this was finally his chance for his own harem, but before he could even utter a word, the owner had grabbed him by the collar, her expression fierce and commanding as she demanded to know who had used her lab. The cashier could feel the force of her grip rocking him back and forth, the owner promised to double his salary if he could get in touch with the person who used her lab and he trembled and handed his phone over, the owner could feel her pulse racing with excitement and anticipation. As she knew the supplement was at least 10 times more effective than the ones currently in the market for $100,000, what makes it nothing short of a world-class evolution is that the ingredients are so basic and affordable, that its net cost wouldn't even surpass $5,000. Back to Lucian, who had just completed his grueling training session, his phone suddenly buzzed with an unexpected call from the cashier. However, to his surprise, the voice on the other side was a female voice, who identified herself as the owner of the pharmacy. Her name is Susu, without hesitation, Susu eagerly requested a meeting with Lucian, expressing her sincere interest in promoting his revolutionary new supplements. After confirming the meeting for next week, Susu could hardly contain her excitement at the prospect of meeting the masterful pharmacist. Her enthusiasm was quickly dampened when the cashier divulged a startling revelation. The man who had been using her lab was merely a high school student. After a brief shock, she is now even more curious about Lucian's real identity. As Lucian delved deeper into the dream realm, he could feel his power growing with each passing day. Today, his target was a level 4 martial artist zombie, a formidable opponent, without a moment's hesitation. Lucian charged toward the zombie, but as he closed in for the kill, he was caught off guard by a swift counterattack that left his arm numb and throbbing with pain. 
The zombie roared with fury, its bloodlust driving it forward as it lunged toward Lucian once again. This time, Lucian was ready. He didn't try to take the zombie head on, instead choosing to duck and dodge. Moving swiftly to the side, Lucian unleashed a devastating roundhouse kick that sent the zombie crashing to the ground. Lucian leaped into the air and brought down a crushing axe kick that left the zombie motionless on the ground. As Lucian delved deeper into the memories of these fallen warriors, he began to shed his initial perception of them as mere monsters, instead viewing them as fallen soldiers who once valiantly protected their land. With a deep sense of reverence, he humbly bowed to show his respect before turning to leave. Having dedicated himself to mastering the three techniques, Lucian spent a week honing his skills. The fruits of his labor had been nothing short of astonishing, his power had grown exponentially. Eager to put his newfound skills to the test, Lucian made his way to a martial arts school where he requested the use of a testing dummy. And he now boasted a new blood energy level of 15.632, propelling him to the rank of a level 2 martial artist. Lucian turned his gaze towards the testing dummy, his eyes glinting with a fierce determination. With a simple punch, he shattered the previous record, clocking in an impressive battle strength of 3137 double that of an average level 2 martial artist. But Lucian was not content to rest on this number, he knew that this was merely a glimpse of his true potential, as he assumed his stance, but this time he was serious. As he stepped away from the testing site, Lucian was greeted by the radiant smile of the receptionist lady. As Lucian left the school, he strolled past a pair of young martial arts enthusiasts, the young girl, who happened to be the owner's daughter was engaged in a light-hearted exchange with the receptionist lady. The receptionist lady was clearly taken aback by Lucian's strikingly handsome appearance. However, the other male student, who was eavesdropping on their conversation, had a different view on the matter. He felt that looks were irrelevant and that only one's martial attainments mattered. In his eyes, Lucian, who appeared to be an average kid, was nothing more than a lost cause. The male student's arrogance was palpable his superiority complex by the fact that he had grown up using all kinds of supplements, making him much stronger than his peers his age. However, before he could continue his tirade, the young girl smacked him on the head and gave him a piece of her mind. She sternly reminded him not to discriminate against others and to curb his arrogant behavior. Despite the young girl's admonishments, the male student was still adamant about proving his point. He demanded to see Lucian's testing results and begged the girl to show them to him. With a resigned sigh, the girl handed over the tablet, as they perused the results, their jaws dropped in disbelief. They couldn't believe what they were seeing, Lucian's blood energy level was off the charts, far surpassing anything they had ever seen before. They couldn't help but wonder if the machine had malfunctioned somehow, but the receptionist lady reassured them that the machine had been checked and calibrated just the day before. Realizing that Lucian was no ordinary student, they were overcome with a sense of urgency to find him and learn more about him. As Lucian stepped out of the taxi, the driver seemed to really like Lucian, and even offered to set him up a date with his daughter. With a polite smile, Lucian thanked the driver and made his way toward the White River City Martial Artist Association. As he approached the building, he witnessed a young martial artist rushing out, tears streaming down his face. It seemed that the results he had received from testing at home were slightly different from the ones he had received at the association. Undeterred, Lucian made his way to the front desk and inquired about the martial artist identification assessment. After filling out a form, he was directed to the testing site, which was packed with applicants of all ages, most of whom seemed to be around 25 years old. Among them was a young girl who looked even younger than Lucian. As Lucian waited in line, a towering figure emerged from the elevator and began cutting through the line, causing a commotion among the applicants. A female applicant called him out on his brazen behavior, but security brushed her off, claiming that he was there for the level 3 assessment and was thus qualified to bypass the line. The crowd was left astounded, as there were only a handful of level 3 martial artists in the city, and the towering figure before them boasted an impressive score. His blood energy level was an astounding 107, and his battle strength reached an absurd 10831. With a single strike, he sent shockwaves that caused many of the onlookers to lose their balance and fall to the ground. After his assessment, the towering figure turned around and noticed two individuals who seemed unfazed by the power of his strike. 
One of them was Lucian, who walked towards the assessment machine with a nonchalant demeanor that seemed to suggest he wasn't overly impressed by the display of power. The young girl standing nearby was convinced that Lucian was just an arrogant kid, but she was about to be proven wrong. With no one else in line for assessment, Lucian stepped up to the machine and placed his hand on the crystal. To everyone's surprise, Lucian's blood energy level was 15.701, a remarkable feat considering he was just a high school student. Even the towering figure was taken aback by this unexpected turn of events. As Lucian turned towards the battle strength dummy, he got into his form, his eyes blazing with determination, and his arm filled with a powerful aura. With the strength of a thousand suns, Lu Xing unleashed a crushing blow on the testing dummy. The force was so powerful that it shattered the glass behind it, leaving everyone stunned. To their surprise, Lu Xing's battle strength was a whopping 15,709. That's like having Hulk's biceps and Iron Man's laser beams combined. He tapped into the power of nature's breathing and stellar techniques, reaching ten times the standard power level for his blood energy. Lu Sheng was so absorbed in the art of martial combat that he didn't even notice the worker trembling with excitement as he announced that Lu Sheng had passed the level 1 martial artist assessment. But, wait for it, the worker stuttered and corrected himself, Lu Sheng had actually passed the level 2, or even 3 assessment. The worker was so confused he didn't even know what the final assessment was but he promised to report the good news to his seniors and bet his career on it. Before Lu Sheng could even react, the worker had sprinted away, leaving him standing there with a smirk on his face. As the worker sprinted away, Lu Sheng turned to face the towering figure standing behind him. The atmosphere was electric as they locked eyes. Lu Sheng couldn't help but ask, anything I can help with? Suddenly, the towering figure outstretched his hand and introduced himself as Zhao. Lu Sheng took a closer look and realized that this guy was a big deal. Zhao must have been at least seven feet tall with biceps the size of tree trunks. But Lu Sheng wasn't intimidated. He outstretched his own hand and shook Zhao's hand, Zhao broke into a huge smile and looked like he had just won the lottery. It was clear that he was genuinely happy to shake Lu Sheng's hand. The rest of the people there saw this as the opportunity of a lifetime and rushed over to shake Lu Xing's hand and take selfies with him. It was like the Beatles had just arrived in town. Lu Xing was the man of the hour, the martial arts prodigy that everyone wanted to meet. Lu Xing didn't want to be stuck in the middle of a crowd, so he saw an opening and bolted away. Hundreds of people were chasing him, but they couldn't keep up with Lu Xing's lightning fast reflexes. Outside of the assessment center, a group of young girls stood waiting for their seniors' results, among them was his sister, who shouted his name and grabbed his attention. Lu Xing walked towards them, wondering why his sister was there in the first place. His sister was equally confused and stood tall with her hands on her hips, questioning why Lu Xing had been sleeping all day. Lu Xing coughed awkwardly and tried to play it off, saying he was out doing something. The two girls who were accompanying Lu Sheng's sister were classmates, and they were both drawn to Lu Sheng's handsome looks. They introduced themselves, with the more outgoing one named Fan Fan and the shyer one named Su Nuo. They were there to accompany their senior Yang for his assessment. As Fan Fan kept swooning over Lu Sheng's dashing appearance, it was obvious that these ladies were head over heels for him. But the man himself was as humble as a slice of bread and twice as polite. Even King He was blushing at the compliment parade, so Lu Xing did what any good brother would do, he patted her on the head and bid them farewell. Fan Fan couldn't believe her eyes, who knew that siblings could get along so well. It made King He feel like a beetroot in a blender but in a good way. Meanwhile, Yang emerged from the assessment center with a look of defeat on her face. The girls gathered around to ask what happened, and Yang let out a deep sigh. Turns out there was an accident that halted the entire assessment until the afternoon. Everyone was shocked and wondering what could have caused such a catastrophe. Yang stammered as she recounted the encounter with a man she referred to as a monster and a prodigy. This guy was about her age but had a blood energy level of 15.7 and a powerful strength of 15,000. To put it mildly, Yang was feeling pretty small compared to him. She always thought she was hot stuff but compared to this dude, she might as well be a twig in a hurricane. The girls were in shock. 
This was the first time they'd seen their always proud senior so set back. They couldn't help but ask for the name of the guy who made Yang feel like a chump. With a serious expression, Yang opened her eyes and revealed that the man's name was none other than Lu Sheng. The group went silent, as the two girls exchanged a glance toward King He. Even she was shocked. Her own brother. Meanwhile, Lu Sheng was heading home, chomping on a giant dumpling like it was his last meal. As he strode closer to his house, he noticed a bunch of middle-aged moms huddling together, looking quite concerned. Apparently, there were some strangers in the neighborhood from the Red Plain Martial Arts School. That's where Lu Sheng usually goes to check his battle strength, so he was curious about what was going on. After finishing his giant dumpling, Lu Sheng pulled out his phone and saw the clerk calling him. But he knew his supplement had the potential to bring in a huge fortune, so he needed to conduct more research and see if this pharmacy had the qualifications for it. After a peaceful slumber, Lu Xing found himself in the dream realm once again. He beckoned for Ai Yi, his trusty assistant in the dream world, to pull up his life record. As he scrolled through the pages, Lu Xing was ecstatic to see that his future had been altered. This time, he was married, had three kids, and died at the ripe old age of 87. Sure, it may not seem like the most exciting life, but it was certainly better than dying as a level 4 martial artist at the age of 37. Lu Xing scanned through the details of his new life, relishing in the small victories he achieved along the way. At 18, he became a level 2 martial artist and attended a prestigious prodigy camp, where he made it to the top 20. Spend three more years in university, after graduation, he served in the military for five years and retired as a lieutenant officer. Then, he started his own martial arts school and continued to hone his skills until he reached level 6 at the age of 45. Although he failed to achieve level 7 at the age of 55, he knew he had come close. He later died during a monster invasion in the year 383, he held his fist tightly, feeling a surge of power course through his body. He had successfully changed his future for the better in just a week. He was determined to push through any obstacles and reach his ultimate goal. As Lu Xing clutched his fist tighter, a sense of determination coursed through his veins. He knew that the mere change he had accomplished was not enough to alter the course of history. He couldn't settle for mediocrity when it came to changing the world. With the weight of humanity's fate on his shoulders, he knew that he needed to push himself to the limit. Level 7, 8, and 9 martial artists were no match for the challenges that awaited him in the future. He needed to go beyond what was considered possible and become a level 10, and even a level 11 martial artist. Lu Xing understood that his journey wouldn't be easy, but he was determined to persevere. He knew that the road ahead would be rocky, but he was ready to face whatever obstacles lay in his path. The fate of humanity rested on his shoulders, and he knew that he couldn't let them down. He was determined to alter the course of history, to change the inevitable ending. Pause for a second here, y'all see that he was married? I wanted to know who he was married to. Anyway, back to the story. In a bright room, Chairman Xiao sat at his desk with a Chinese brush in hand. He carefully crafted each stroke of the character with precision, his brush gliding across the page with ease. The person on the other side of the screen couldn't help but compliment his impressive skills, and claimed that Chairman Xiao is one step closer to level 7 martial artist. But the tone shifted, and the person let out a deep sigh, followed by a sarcastic tone as he said, only if Chairman Xiao could put equal effort into education. The comment that followed hit Chairman Xiao like a punch to the gut. He felt his hand shake uncontrollably, causing his last strokes to go crooked. He lifted his brush, his eyes fixed on the screen. With an awkward smile, he replied that he had always dreamed of prodigies rising up from White Lake City. Unfortunately, due to two reasons, it had always been a rough road. Firstly, there was no historical martial art family to draw from, and secondly, the city lacked the necessary resources to support and cultivate talent. Even if there was a prodigy, they would inevitably move away to find better opportunities. Chairman Xiao couldn't help but feel a sense of despair wash over him. The man's frustration was palpable as he made it clear to Chairman Xiao that there could be no excuses. With the prodigy camp right around the corner, it had been years since their city had sent a representative, and the lack of promising results was becoming an embarrassment. 
To make matters worse, the absence of any candidates was the ultimate disgrace. The man's voice dripped with fury and contempt as he delivered this scathing message. The man's final words were resolute and firm, this time, no matter what, the face of White Lake City must be saved. Finally, he ended the call with an abrupt click, leaving Chairman Shao to ponder the gravity of the situation. Chairman Shao was livid with frustration and anger. He clenched his fists around the pile of papers, knuckles turning white as he covered his face in exasperation. He had always dreamt of discovering prodigies and achieving promising results, but with limited resources and being stuck at level 6 as a martial artist, it seemed like an impossible feat he was caught in a rut with no hope of leveling up. Just then, a secretary burst into his office, interrupting his train of thought with urgent news. Chairman Shao was in no mood for distractions, but the secretary was adamant that he hears the news. She relayed the message of an 18-year-old level 2 martial artist with a staggering battle strength of 15,000. The news was like a breath of fresh air for the chairman, a ray of hope in his dark day. Upon hearing the news, Chairman Shao snatched the tablet from the secretary and eagerly checked the recordings. The force even shook the secretary's ample bosom, and it went boing boing boing. As both of them scrutinized the recording, Chairman Zhao's sharp eye caught something remarkable. Lu Sheng was executing a perfect state punching technique, Chairman explained to the secretary, a terminology used only in the most elite martial arts circles. The chairman tried to simplify the explanation for the bewildered secretary, telling her that less than ten people in the world could perform this feat at such a young age. But that was not all. The chairman dug deeper into Lu Xing's personal information and discovered something even more astounding. How could an 18-year-old possess battle strength that was ten times the standard level, with only a blood energy level of 15.7? The perfect state could amplify one's strength at most twice, so how was Lu Xing achieving such a feat? The chairman fell silent for a moment, lost in thought, a 18-year-old, ten times the standard battle strength, and coming from an average family, the implications were staggering. The excitement was palpable as Chairman Xiao burst out with laughter. He couldn't contain his joy at the prospect of discovering a talent like Lu Sheng. In his excitement, he lifted his secretary high up in the air and hugged her tightly, and it went boing 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 again, causing her to blush. As he spun her around, he declared that Lu Sheng was a martial artist talent that only existed once in ten million. The secretary, still a bit dizzy, asked the chairman what made a gifted martial artist. With a huge smile on his face, Chairman Xiao explained that some martial artists were simply born with a natural talent that gifted them with abilities beyond imagination. Some could experience a massive surge in their blood energy level, while others could move faster than lightning or unleash explosive power. Determined to meet Lu Sheng and his family, Chairman Xiao quickly got dressed. He couldn't wait to see the young prodigy for himself and offer him an opportunity of a lifetime. At that very moment, a bright-eyed student from the Red Plain eagerly approached the girl with news that they had finally uncovered Lu Sheng's true identity and his place of residence. The younger students, curious as to why their seniors had been devoting so much time to track down this seemingly average and impoverished kid, couldn't help but wonder if Lu Sheng had somehow provoked her wrath. But the girl silenced their doubts with a stern, shush, her attention already diverted to an incoming call on her phone. From the conversation, it became clear that the other party had also set their sights on Lu Sheng, and the girl knew she couldn't afford to waste a single moment. The girl barked orders at the young student to scurry off and fetch lavish gifts for both a parent and a younger sibling. Though still befuddled, the student didn't dare question her authority and raced off to the shopping center without a second thought. Meanwhile, back at Lu Sheng's humble abode, he was jolted awake by a loud knocking at his bedroom door. When he opened it, he was met with an unexpected sight, his entire family, alongside two unfamiliar faces, had gathered in the living room. Before his mother could even introduce the strangers, one of them eagerly stepped forward, introducing himself as the chairman of the esteemed White Lake Martial Artist Association. Lu Xing knew that such a high-ranking figure must be at least a level 6 martial artist, but he maintained his cool composure and shook the man's outstretched hand. The chairman, impressed by Lu Xing's unflappable demeanor, couldn't help but feel a sense of admiration for the young man. Lu Xing's mother then introduced the other stranger Nai Shuang, from the Red Plain Martial Arts School. 
The girl greeted Lu Sheng and reminded him that they had once met during the Red Plain School. As Lu Sheng took his seat, the chairman launched into his speech. He had come to present Lu Sheng with the coveted badge of a level 2 martial artist, but due to his extraordinary performance, the association had decided to pay him a pension befitting a level 3 martial artist. As if that wasn't enough, the association was also offering a staggering 1 million yuan to encourage Lu Sheng. The news hit Lu Sheng's family like a ton of bricks, leaving them reeling in disbelief. But Lu Sheng himself didn't lose his cool. Though he expressed his gratitude for the support and encouragement, he wasted no time in cutting to the chase. He knew that these kinds of rewards were never handed out without a motive. So he asked the chairman straight up, is there anything I need to do? The chairman was taken aback by Lu Sheng's no-nonsense approach. He reached for an envelope in his suit pocket and produced an invitation to attend the prodigy camp in the province. But before he could even finish his sentence, the girl in the room jumped up and began shaking her head vehemently. Sure, the prodigy camp might have some of the most talented martial artists around, she said, but it's also a place that destroys talent. As Lu Sheng took his seat, the girl launched into his speech. As she leaned in, her eyes lit up with a hint of mischief, and she began to spin a tale of her senior brother, a senior at the same school, who had once been a prodigy. With his remarkable talent, he had high hopes of going into the camp, but when he returned, he was defeated and lost. The young girl implored Lu Sheng not to take the same risk, but the chairman interjected, claiming that Lu Sheng was different. He saw something in the young man that her senior brother lacked, potential that he knew could take him much further. With a flourish, the chairman handed Lu Sheng an envelope and declared that he would respect whatever decision he made. The tension in the air was palpable as Lu Sheng's lips curled up in a sly smile. He accepted the envelope and agreed with the chairman's opinion, declaring that he was up for the challenge. The chairman breathed a sigh of relief, feeling as if a stone had just lifted from his heart. He bade farewell to the family, promising to come and pick up Lu Sheng in a few days. As the door clicked shut behind the chairman, Lu Sheng turned his attention to the young girl sitting before him. The girl's heart raced as she took a closer look at Lu Sheng, he had seemed much more handsome in person, suddenly, she coughed and regained her composure. She came to invite Lu Sheng to become an honor student at the prestigious Red Plain Martial Arts School. As an honor student, he would have access to all the school's classes, and equipment, and even have one-on-one -on -one sessions with her father. On top of that, he would receive a generous wage, with no liability. Only asking to use his title. But he also sensed that she had an ulterior motive. And he was right, the girl was thinking to use his prodigious talents as a publicity stunt to make her school even more popular in the city. Despite her persuasive arguments, Lu Xing calmly declined her offer. The young woman leaped up from her chair, brimming with enthusiasm as she confidently proclaimed that she could offer even greater benefits. Lu Xing simply shook his head, calmly stating that being an honored member was enough and that she could publicly declare to everyone that he regularly used their equipment and trained there because it was all true. However, he politely declined her offer to become a student, as he had no need for it. With a sense of finality, the girl took a deep breath, realizing that there was nothing more she could do. She reluctantly agreed to the terms, and with a heavy heart, announced that from now on, Lu Sheng would be receiving a monthly wage of a staggering 100,000. She rose to bid farewell to Lu Sheng and his family. The family still couldn't believe it, their jaws still on the floor from the shock of it all. But Lu Sheng's gentle smile and reassuring words helped to ease their minds. As he held on to his mother's hand, he couldn't help but notice the calluses that had formed from years of hard work. It was a testament to the sacrifices that his parents had made to support the family. But now, things were going to be different. Lu Sheng had achieved the incredible feat of becoming a level 2 martial artist, and he was going to use his skills to provide for his family. From this day forward, his mother would no longer have to work night shifts, and his father could say goodbye to his backbreaking laborious job. Lu Sheng was determined to make sure that his family never had to worry about money again. The pharmacy owner was a bundle of nerves, chewing her nails to the quick as she frantically tried to uncover the identity of the mysterious man who had left behind the incredible supplement. Despite her best efforts, she hadn't been able to find a single clue about him. 
She had even combed through the list of newly registered pharmacists but to no avail. The more she delved into the supplement, the more amazed she became. The test results were off the charts, it was multiple times stronger than any level 1 or 2 supplements, and it even surpassed some of the levels 3 supplements. And the best part? There were no side effects to worry about. She couldn't believe her luck. A supplement that could easily fetch hundreds of thousands of dollars, all for a meager margin of 3,000. With a loud thud, she slammed her hand on the table in frustration. She knew that she had struck gold with this supplement, but without the man's help, she was powerless. Suddenly, the clerk's speech became stuttered as he pointed towards the television screen. The pharmacy owner jumped up from her seat in excitement, eager to see what he had discovered. As the news report played, she couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief, her ample bosom bouncing with joy. Boing boing, it seemed that the mysterious master was nothing more than an 18-year-old prodigy from White Lake City. Later that evening, deep in the heart of Guhu Mountain, a shadowy figure darted through the treacherous terrain. It was none other than Lu Sheng, his bag slung over his back as he utilized the stellar technique to increase his agility and speed. It wasn't long before he reached the summit, his breaths coming in short gasps as he used the nature breathing technique to recover his energy and stamina. With a sudden burst of energy, Lu Sheng broke through the bottleneck once again. It was a feeling like no other, a rush of power coursing through his veins as he stood atop the mountain, his eyes gleaming with determination, and to his surprise, he had broken the bottleneck and leveled up. Lu Sheng had come to this mountain for a very specific reason, to collect rare and potent herbs for his new supplement. He knew that there were countless plants here that had yet to be discovered and used in this era. As he journeyed deeper into the mountain, he plucked the most promising specimens, storing them carefully in his satchel. Finally, he reached the bottom of the mountain, where he had pre-ordered additional herbs from a green-shirt man wearing a hat. The man presented his wares with a sly grin, and Lu Xing couldn't help but feel a twinge of suspicion. Examining the herbs closely, Lu Xing could tell that they were all in excellent condition and incredibly fresh. He reached for his wallet to pay the man the agreed-upon price, but suddenly, the man's tone changed. With a sneaky glint in his eye, he raised the price twice, pointing to the remaining herbs and insisting that Lu Xing purchase them all. Well, guess who is going to get his ass smacked? Lu Xing narrowed his eyes, unimpressed by the sudden change of events. The man who stood before him arrogantly declared that Lu Sheng was an outsider and needed to follow his rules. As he spoke, a group of menacing men emerged from the forest, brandishing weapons in their hands. A wry grin spread across Lu Sheng's face as he instantly recognized what these guys were up to. The group cracked their knuckles and advanced menacingly toward the seemingly naive and innocent teenager, their laughter and threats filling the air. But Lu Sheng was not one to be intimidated easily. In a swift motion, he gripped a giant rock on his side and squeezed it with all his might, shattering it into tiny pieces. The group stood stunned, sweat beating on their foreheads as they realized they were no match for this young powerhouse. With a calm and steady gaze, Lu Sheng removed his hand from the rock and locked eyes with the group, wondering if they still had the foolishness to try and take him on. Their uncertain expressions spoke volumes as they backed away slowly, realizing that they had met their match in this formidable outsider. As Lu Xing stood tall, the group of men fell to their knees in a flurry of apologies and begged for his forgiveness. They even went as far as calling him, Daddy. Lu Xing couldn't help but grin at their sudden change of heart. With a shrug of his broad shoulders, Lu Xing informed them that he would be on his way. As he picked up the bucket of herbs the green shirt guy had instructed him to take, he was pleasantly surprised to find that they were all free. He had planned to pay for them, but this unexpected turn of events left him feeling grateful. The group watched in awe as Lu Xing casually strolled away, the bucket of herbs in his hand. Their encounter with him had been a wake-up call, and they knew that they could no longer continue their thuggish ways. They decided to turn their lives around and pursue something more meaningful. As the sun rose on a new day, Lu Xing arrived at the prodigy camp, a sprawling compound that looked like something out of a military movie. He couldn't help but notice that most of the people here were proudly sporting their badges, while his own badge was still sitting in a display case back at home. 
A stern-looking middle-aged man approached him and demanded to know why he was there and where he came from. Lu Xing calmly explained his situation, but the bystanders began to mock him, calling him a redneck for not having a badge. Unperturbed, the man checked his information and quickly realized that Lu Sheng was a man referred by the chairman of the White Lake Association. He guided Lu Sheng to the right place, leading him through the maze of buildings until they finally arrived at their destination. As the candidates filed into the room, the giant doors ominously sealed behind them. Some began to panic, but a stern-looking man quickly introduced the rules, to pass the entrance exam, they would need to find their way out of the room. Suddenly, the ground beneath them gave way, and everyone plummeted into darkness. Some of the candidates were prepared for the fall and landed gracefully, while others crashed to the ground with a sickening thud. For example, this idiot over here. Lu Sheng surveyed the scene calmly, his sharp senses taking in every detail. He looked down the long hallway that stretched out before him, knowing that this was no ordinary passage. As he did, a man in a red coat named Lin began to sneer at the situation. Lin tried to assert his authority over the other candidates, attempting to unify those from Qin Yuan City and paint Lu Sheng as an outsider. Pointing a finger at Lu Sheng, he declared that the young man would be nothing more than a cannon folder, a pawn in their game. And ordered Lu Sheng to check out the path for everyone. Lu Xing chuckled and shoved Lin aside, and smirk etched across his face. Giga Chad always flies solo, he jeered, while the weaklings huddle together like scared pussies. Lin's face flushed with anger and embarrassment as he seethed with the desire to take revenge on Lu Sheng. He threatened to kill him, but little did he know that karma was about to catch up with him. Suddenly, Lu Sheng's foot triggered a hidden trap on the floor, causing a swarm of enormous red balls to cascade down the hallway. As if that wasn't enough, the balls then transformed into high-tech robots that towered over the candidates, each one far stronger than a level 1 martial artist. With well over a dozen of them, the odds were stacked against the group. As the two cowards continued to taunt Lu Sheng, a brave girl warned him to be careful. But he didn't need the warning, as he casually caught one of the robot's punches with just one hand. Is that all you've got? He scoffed before effortlessly dismantling the robot's limbs and filling the room with the sound of electricity. As expected, there's always that one clown in the group who refuses to acknowledge the obvious. In this case, it was this buffoon who couldn't fathom the idea that Lu Sheng was a force to be reckoned with. Instead of showing some humbleness he giggled and proclaimed that the robots were just a pile of junk. He even dared to try and lead the group away from the danger, but they were all understandably hesitant. With everyone else trembling with fear, this moron swaggered over to one of the robots and placed his hands on his hips. With a burst of confidence, he sprang into the air and aimed a spinning kick at the robot's head. To everyone's surprise, he actually managed to uncoil the robot's head from its body. But before he could even bask in his own glory, a colossal fist came out of nowhere and sent him flying across the room. The impact of the blow dislocated his jaw, knocked out several of his teeth, and broke his cheekbone. With an unintelligible babble, the buffoon muttered something about the robots being a level 2 threat, not level 1. As the group helped the battered buffoon to his feet, they watched in awe as Lu Xing decimated the robots with ease. It was almost as if he was bored with the whole ordeal. With a casual yawn, he effortlessly broke through the robots' defenses and exposed their cores, making quick work of them. Meanwhile, outside the hallway, a worker had been keeping an eye on the situation. At first, he had assumed that the robots had malfunctioned, but then the door behind him creaked open, revealing a scene of chaos and destruction. Flames roared through the hallway as the robots exploded one by one. Lu Xing caught sight of the worker and quickly deduced that he was likely a guardian for the second stage. Without hesitation, he unleashed a devastating punch. In the control room, a stunning woman with black stockings monitored the entire camp. A green-haired man entered the room, holding a steaming cup of coffee. He greeted the woman by her first name, much to her chagrin. The woman scowled and ordered the man, who was none other than Major Qin Zhao Jun, to address her by her proper title, Lieutenant Colonel Dong Jing Shui. As the two settled into their chairs, Major Qin couldn't help but express his curiosity about the quality of the prodigy camp. 
Lieutenant Colonel Dong rubbed her forehead in frustration, unimpressed by the candidates she had seen thus far. There were only eight who even met the standard, and none of them seemed particularly special. That is until she noticed one girl who stood out from the rest. This girl was an 18-year-old martial artist with a spirit type, who was almost at the level of a spiritual master and approaching level 2 as a martial artist. Her skills were impressive, to say the least. Lieutenant Colonel Dong couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope for the camp's future prospects. As Major Chin took a sip of his coffee, he tried to break the silence with a joke, but his attempt fell flat, leaving him with an awkward smile. He quickly shifted his attention to the screens in front of him, scanning the various camera feeds in the camp. Suddenly, his eyes widened in shock and he accidentally spilled hot coffee all over himself, but he didn't even flinch as his gaze remained fixated on the screen. Lieutenant Colonel Don Jing Shui noticed Major Qin's reaction and immediately turned her attention to the screen as well, her eyes widening in surprise. What they saw was unbelievable. What y'all thought of this Lieutenant Colonel? Do you think she is waifu material? Meanwhile, in exam room 7, Ling emerged victorious over the final training puppet. She faintly sensed a dangerous presence emanating from the passage across from her. As she opened the door to proceed with the test, she was suddenly startled. The staff members stood there, holding shields and weapons, fully armed, and staring intently at the exit of another passage. Ling released her psychic power, allowing her to see through the walls. Behind the walls, she witnessed two individuals engaged in combat. However, the adversaries were not robots but humans. As she attempted to closely observe the identity of one of the combatants, immense and overwhelming pressure suddenly engulfed her as if she were being confronted by a demon itself. Beads of sweat dripped down her forehead. Startled, she took a few steps back, hastily retreating to her original passage, tightly closing the door. She sat on the ground, trembling uncontrollably. This palpable sense of fear was truly terrifying. Lieutenant Colonel Dong Qingxue, we will now refer to her as Snowy, and Major Qin Xiaojun hurriedly arrived at the scene. Major Qin inquired about the situation inside, only to learn that the cameras had been destroyed, leaving the situation inside unclear. Furthermore, communication with the supervising personnel had been lost a while ago. Major Qin immediately instructed the staff to prepare a report containing information on all individuals inside the passage. However, Snowy waved it off, saying it wasn't necessary. Just then, cracks appeared on the sturdy walls, and suddenly, Lu Xing burst through the door. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief upon realizing it was a student. In Lu Xing's hands, they saw him carrying someone. Lu Xing released the invigilator and introduced himself as Lu Xing from Whitewater City. Major Qin burst into laughter and expressed his satisfaction upon seeing Lu Xing. He remarked about how Lu Xing managed to destroy such expensive training puppets and even beat up the invigilator. Lu Xing, feeling awkward, explained that it was all a misunderstanding. He believed it was part of the assessment and knew the invigilator was strong but couldn't hold back. Snowy glanced at Lu Sheng and suddenly released her psychic power. Hundreds of violet threads flew towards Lu Sheng. Lu Sheng's expression remained unchanged, and he didn't move. The threads passed through his body. Snowy closed her eyes as if she had obtained the answers she sought. She took a deep breath and congratulated Lu Sheng on passing the assessment. She instructed him to rest for now. After the staff escorted Lu Xing away, the two instructors carefully analyzed the reports and recordings. The data revealed that Lu Xing's blood energy was only 15, but his battle strength reached an astonishing 15,000. It was truly unbelievable. Just a moment ago, Snowy attempted to use her psychic power to probe, but she didn't perceive anything, and Lu Xing showed no reaction either. Qin asked how they should handle this anomaly. Snowy remained silent for a moment and then said, the data may not be accurate, but for now, let's consider Lu Sheng as a top seed, alongside Ling, a faint smile appeared on her lips. It seems that this camp has become quite interesting. Just a moment ago, Lu Sheng sensed Snowy's probing. He could feel that Snowy's psychic power was more than five times stronger than his own. Immediately, he retracted his psychic power, unsure if he had been detected. At that moment, his stomach growled loudly. 
The staff members awkwardly smiled upon hearing it and decided to take Lu Sheng to the cafeteria for a meal before returning to the dormitory. Lu Sheng asked the portion size of the meal here, the staff member smiled and said, for your first meal, it's unlimited. Upon entering the cafeteria, Lu Sheng saw a table full of delicious food. Within a few minutes, he devoured dozens of dishes. He then requested another five dishes, and eventually, he even asked for ten more dishes. The staff members were astonished by his appetite. At that moment, a girl approached him, carrying a tray of food. She introduced herself as Yang, also a student from Whitewater City who participated in the training camp. They had gone through the assessment together. Lu Xing thought she had come to join him for a free meal, so he told her that the food here was unlimited and she could ask the chefs for her own portion. Yang gritted her teeth and thought, no wonder you don't have a girlfriend. Lu Xing asked again, recalling what the president had said about no one from Whitewater City being able to come here. Yang explained, it's not like that. Students from Whitewater City come here every year. However, very few can pass the assessment. Even if they do, they are often sent back due to insufficient points. Lu Sheng took a big bite into his massive roasted chicken and asked what the points were. Yang explained that points were the currency here. They could be used in the training camp to exchange for resources and equipment usage, seek advice from the instructors, obtain supplements, and even accommodation. In the future, they would also be required for meals. Yang held up three fingers and said, currently, only three people have points, they got their points by passing the initial assessment. The first person is Chao Yong, a martial artist with second-level talent and specialize in defense. The second person is Meng Jin He, who also has a second-level talent, specializing in speed. The last person is the rarest and most powerful, Ling, who possesses an awakened psychic power talent. It is said that Ling is the strongest participant in this training camp. Just then, Ling passed by while holding her meal. She turned her head and caught sight of Lu Sheng, who was holding a large plate of roasted chicken. Their eyes met, and in that instant, her demeanor changed. She almost spilled her soup on the floor and quickly turned away, leaving the scene. Lu Xing remembered that someone had used psychic power to probe him earlier and chuckled. He asked Yang, only three people cleared the assessment. Yang replied, it is said that there is a fourth person, but it's just a rumor. They say this person possesses terrifying strength, tearing apart all the second-level training puppets with bare hands, he was like a demon, he even sent the invigilator to the hospital. Yang burst into laughter, saying that such a lunatic couldn't possibly exist. As Lu Xing took a sip of water, he choked and spat it out upon hearing this. Yang thought to herself that even though Lu Sheng was a talented prodigy individual in Whitewater City, in this training camp, he was just an ordinary person. She didn't want Lu Sheng to give up on himself. She reached out and handed him her handkerchief to wipe his mouth, saying that she believed in him. While Yang was encouraging Lu Sheng, she didn't notice the three people who had appeared behind them. The leader among them cleared his throat, and Yang turned around to see that it was one of the camp staff. The middle-aged man, looking at the report, said that due to the destruction of 18 training puppets during the assessment and the incident with the instructor ending up in the hospital, they needed to conduct an investigation. They requested Lu Sheng to accompany them. Yang couldn't believe her ears, and it wasn't just her, everyone in the cafeteria turned their gaze toward Lu Sheng. Lu Sheng stood up awkwardly, saying that he hadn't finished eating, and asked if he could have his meal packed. The instructor was speechless but agreed to Lu Xing's request. Lu Xing waved to Yang before being taken away. Everyone in the cafeteria was stunned. The rumors turned out to be true. Yang remembered how she had described Lu Xing earlier, and she thought, oh my, what have I said? In the command room, Lu Xing saw Snowy again. She had an expressionless face while telling Lu Sheng that this time he had depleted half a year's budget for the training camp. Lu Sheng's body trembled, thinking that Snowy was going to demand compensation from him. But Snowy continued, saying that each training puppet cost tens of millions, and the ones he had damaged couldn't be repaired. However, she mentioned that he didn't need to compensate and that it wasn't entirely his fault. Lu Sheng breathed a sigh of relief. Just then, the door behind them opened, 
revealing Qin and the three other young individuals. They were the ones who had successfully passed the assessment. Ling was startled when she saw Lu Sheng, and the other two individuals, one with an expressionless face and the other seemingly discontented, also caught his attention. Snowy congratulated the four of them once again and handed each person a card for storing their points. The three individuals received gold cards with 100 points each, while Lu Xing received a white card. Lu Xing thought it was an empty card without any points and flipped it over to read the usage rules on the back. It stated that a meal cost 5 points, one hour of practice in the training room cost 10 points, a session with a regular instructor cost 30 points, and a session with the head instructor required 100 points. Lu Xing felt disappointed, realizing that only eating meat seemed to have any value. Upon hearing this, Qin fell off his chair in disbelief. Qin pointed to the white card and said, that's a card worth a thousand points. If it weren't for Snowy intervening and stopping the higher-ups, the losses caused by Lu Sheng would have cost a fortune. He would have had to pay back the points. When the other two heard that Lu Sheng had obtained a thousand points, they were taken aback. The robust Chao Yong sneered with contempt, mocking the notion that the training camp was solely based on skill. He hadn't expected there to be privileged, leaving him greatly disappointed. Meng Jin he also smirked, agreeing with Chao Yong's remarks. Only Ling, standing weakly beside them, spoke up, do you even know what he has done? Chao Yong burst into laughter, spreading rumors of bribery and collusion with classmates and instructors. He knew that the instructors were all third-level martial artists, so how could Lu Xing possibly defeat them? With Lu Xing's small frame and presumably low blood energy level, it seemed impossible. Chao Yong tore open his shirt, revealing his muscular physique, and locked his gaze onto Lu Sheng, activating his own talent. He sneered with disdain, eager to see Lu Sheng prove himself. Lu Sheng looked coldly at Chao Yong, sensing that things were about to escalate. Qin wanted to intervene but was stopped by Snowy. Lu Sheng sighed and reluctantly asked Chao Yong, Are you sure you want to go through with this? Ignoring Lu Sheng's words, Chao Yong charged toward him. Lu Xing raised a single hand and made a flicking finger on the head gesture. In an instant, finger flickering with stellar technique combined. Causing him to forcefully fly back several meters until he crashed heavily into the thick command room wall, creating a large hole. Chao Yong fell into unconsciousness, leaving everyone stunned. Only Lu Sheng was now concerned about whether he would be held responsible for the damage caused, considering it was Chao Yong who initiated the confrontation. Ling and Meng Jin were shocked and speechless. The two officers seemed to have anticipated the outcome. Lu Sheng asked if he could leave now. Just as Lu Sheng was about to depart, Snowy inquired about his plans for further training. She mentioned that he could use his points to receive personal guidance from her. Lu Sheng ain't no simp. He expressed his gratitude but declined Snowy's offer, stating that he had important matters to attend to. Without even looking back, he departed, leaving everyone curious about what could be more important than receiving personal guidance from Snowy. This sparked their curiosity, wondering what could outweigh such an opportunity. As Lu Sheng halted his steps, he turned around with a serious expression and said, I'm going back to sleep. Everyone was left speechless, except for Qin, who burst into laughter. They followed Lu Xing through the surveillance cameras and couldn't believe their eyes when they saw him actually going back to sleep. Lu Xing's actions reminded Snowy and Qin of their own time in the training camp, particularly someone named Xiangpeng. Hearing that name, Qin's chest started to ache. During their time in the camp, Xiangpeng, with his power-based talent, had been like a king, crushing everyone beneath his feet. His presence had left a lasting impact on Snowy and Qin but only for a short time. Skills, speed, observation, judgment, experience, tactics, and strategy, strength is not the only factor at play. Through time, constant accumulation, and growth, one can develop these qualities. Those who rely solely on their talent for power will ultimately fade away like fleeting flowers. Snowy believes that Lu Sheng might also end up this way. In the world of dreams, Lu Sheng is engaged in a fierce battle with a muscular zombie. The colossal fist of the zombie strikes towards Lu Sheng, but he blocks it with both hands. 
Seizing the opportunity, he grabs the zombie's fist with one hand and picks up a spear from the ground with the other. With a powerful thrust, he aims for the zombie's knee, immobilizing it. Lu Xing activates the stellar technique, channeling all his strength into his arm. With a mighty strike, he kills the zombie. Lu Sheng can sense that this zombie was once a level 6 martial artist. Equivalent to Chairman Xiao, if he hadn't used his psychic power to resist the previous attack, Lu Sheng would have been slain. Lu Sheng understands that martial arts skills and combat experience are true treasures obtained in the dream world, surpassing mere physical enhancement. Agility, boxing, palm techniques, leg techniques, spear techniques, sword techniques, human capacity has limits, and no one can excel in all areas. However, Lu Sheng is different. He stands on the shoulders of countless individuals, and he can achieve perfection without any flaws. Lu Xing realizes that he needs to continue training his psychic power. If he were to encounter a true sixth-level powerhouse, he might not be able to win. He exits the dream world and enters the realm of consciousness, beginning to refine his psychic power. As Lu Xing touches his consciousness within the realm, a tremendous surge of energy enters his mind, causing it to feel as if it's about to explode. Along with the pain, something seems to have ruptured as well. He returns to the dream world and discovers that he has achieved another breakthrough. Summoning AI, Lu Sheng wants to see if his future has changed. A new life record appears before him, Lu Sheng, at the age of 65, advances to the seventh level martial artist, living to the age of 156, married, and holding the rank of major general. Lu Sheng is delighted and asks AI if his current access allows him to inquire about the continuation of the previous martial arts techniques. To his surprise, he receives advanced versions of the three techniques he previously practiced, along with an additional one called the Divine Pluto Technique. This technique was created by an 11th level martial artist, and what astonishes him is that it is a complete martial arts technique. With boundless imagination and unfathomable strangeness, this martial arts technique is truly incredible. It is not a technique focused on combat skills, but rather specifically designed for psychic practitioners. It encompasses techniques and combat principles utilizing psychic power. The most crucial aspect of this technique is the ability to construct another body within the martial artist's own body using psychic power. This secondary body provides comprehensive enhancements to oneself. The first stage of this technique lies in utilizing psychic power to strengthen organs, thus achieving the amplification of blood energy level. This is precisely what Lu Xing needs. Despite his formidable combat strength, his blood energy level does not match up. This martial arts technique is truly terrifying, and the genius behind its creation is named Duan Yi Feng. Lu Xing believes that even among 11th level martial artists, Duan Yi Feng must be one of the most exceptional individuals. However, unfortunately, even such a person cannot prevent the destruction of human civilization. Lu Xing sighs, but his determination grows stronger. He knows that he still has a long journey ahead of him. He needs to become stronger, change history, and elevate the overall martial art strength of human civilization. In the blink of an eye, a whole month had flown by. Inside the telekinesis chamber, Ling took her place at the very heart of the room, surrounded by a flurry of golden orbs hurtling toward her with incredible speed. Her eyes shut tightly, and within the realm of darkness, she glimpsed vivid flashes of purple light dancing before her. With precision and finesse, Ling's psychic abilities swiftly intercepted and deflected every single orb, showcasing her mastery over her newest creation, the Star Dart. As the training session drew to a close, the doors of the telekinesis chamber swung open, and Snowy entered, a beam of pride illuminating her face. She commended Ling on her remarkable progress, mentioning that once Ling could effortlessly control six star darts, it would signify her ascent to the coveted position of a level one psychic master. Ling humbly bowed, her voice filled with genuine gratitude for Snowy's invaluable guidance. However, Snowy's brows furrowed in concern as she detected a hint of lingering trauma within Ling's demeanor. Ling's mind suddenly jolted with recollection, her heart pounding with unease. Those haunting eyes, an abyssal gaze that seemed to emanate from the depths of hell itself, haunted her every night. Startled awake by nightmarish visions, she couldn't escape the grip of fear that tightened around her. She sobbed, 
her body shaking uncontrollably. Ling asked Snowy if there was any solution to this problem. Snowy's response was equally simple, find the person who had traumatized her, either defeat or kill him, defeat or kill. The thought lingered in her mind. Then she remembered that Lu Sheng had been sleeping and wallowing in his room for the past month. If his abilities remained stagnant, perhaps there was a possibility of defeating him in the near future. Snowy exited the chamber of telekinesis and bumped into Qin outside the door. Qin was instructing Meng Jin. Although Ling had a somewhat timid personality, Meng Jin's character wasn't much better. Snowy inquired about Lu Sheng's condition, and Qin shook his head, mentioning that Lu Sheng had been asleep every time they delivered meals. He seemed to be a lost cause. Qin jokingly reminded Snowy of her previous words about enjoying dormitory life and sleeping all day without anyone caring. Snowy rubbed her temples, feeling disappointed in Lu Sheng. Anger surged within her as she left in frustration. As Yang diligently went about her job of cleaning the training room, a girl arrived. It was a lively young girl, who appeared out of nowhere and offered her assistance. In an instant, they struck up a conversation. The girl, massaging her aching arm, let out a sigh of longing, confessing her envy for those who had rewarded a hundred points. She confessed that she had to make sacrifices, even skipping meals, just to scrape together enough points to get by. Curiosity sparked within her, and she turned her attention to Yang, recalling her close association with Lu Sheng. The atmosphere grew heavy as the girl posed the question, sensing the shift in Yang's expression. The truth was, even Yang herself was perplexed by Lu Sheng's sudden change. Initially, he had displayed great promise and strength, but within a mere month, he seemed to have lost his drive, spending most of his time sleeping in the dormitory. The girl waved her hand dismissively, offering her perspective that those blessed with strength and talent often experience an explosive burst of strength initially, only to be overtaken by others in due time. Perhaps Lu Sheng had realized this and chosen to retreat from the limelight. Yang remained silent, her thoughts deep and complex. Deep down, she knew that Lu Sheng wasn't the type of person to give up so easily. With a heavy heart, she averted her gaze and continued with her cleaning duties. Suddenly, an uproar echoed through the door, drawing everyone's attention. The atmosphere brimmed with anticipation as Chao Yong prepared to challenge quadruple time gravity. Yang was shocked, she had attempted the one time gravity chamber, however, she only managed to last mere 20 minutes before passing out. Eager to see what was going on, the girl eagerly tugged Yang's arm, urging her to check it out. Yang's mind raced with curiosity, whispering to herself, Lu Sheng, what in the world are you up to? Unbeknownst to them, Lu Sheng remained immersed in the depths of his dream world, diligently honing his skills and grinding experience. Inside the gravity room, Chao Yong braced himself to take on the challenge of three times the normal gravity. As he stood tall, his skin took on a stony texture, adorned with shimmering golden lightning. Gritting his teeth, he endured, surpassing the four-minute mark within the chamber. Moments later, Chao Yong emerged from the gravity room, greeted by a chorus of praises from the onlookers. Taking in a deep breath, he cast a smug glance toward the crowd, savoring the satisfaction of their admiration. A loyal henchman approached, extending his congratulations, confidently asserting that it wouldn't be long until Chao Yong would conquer quadruple gravity. Chao Yong absentmindedly rubbed his forehead, his thoughts drifting towards Lu Sheng. In response to Chao Yong's musings, the henchman burst into laughter, mocking Lu Sheng for spending his day daydreaming and sleeping. Chao Yong's grin widened, accompanied by a sneer, fueling his determination to surpass the supposedly arrogant Lu Sheng. Deep down, he knew all too well about the timeless tale of the turtle and the rabbit, and he relished the prospect of emerging as the victor in this race. In a split second, a blur of movement caught Chao Yong's attention, causing him to swiftly turn his head. To his surprise, it was Lu Sheng who passed by, making his way toward the gravity chamber. Lu Sheng glanced around, his eyes brimming with curiosity as he took in the surroundings. Chao Yong, unable to resist his disdain, mocked Lu Sheng for his month long slumber. Ignoring Chao Yong's taunts, Lu Sheng's mind was preoccupied with more practical matters reflecting on the number of points he had spent on meals throughout the month, with a clear plan in mind, he resolved to commence his training with a three-hour session at level 2 gravity. 
As the door is about to close, Lu Sheng locked eyes with Chao Yong and uttered words that carried a resolute tone, it's been a month. Time to test my progress. Chao Yong, pointing an accusatory finger, couldn't contain his astonishment at Lu Sheng's audacity. You honestly believe that you can gain strength by idling away your days by sleeping? Are you kidding me? he exclaimed. Chao Yong's disbelief only intensified as he observed Lu Xing's entry into the gravity chamber without any apparent warm-up. The chamber door sealed shut and the countdown commenced, each passing second fueling Chao Yong's sneering demeanor. He took delight in ridiculing Lu Xing's perceived arrogance and ignorance. Minutes ticked by, accompanied by an eerie silence emanating from within the gravity chamber. It was as if the doubled gravity had no effect on Lu Xing at all. Suddenly, the ground beneath them began to tremble, causing the bystanders to gasp in shock, their eyes widened in disbelief as they witnessed Lu Xing's lightning-fast kicks and punches, each strike generating thunderous sonic booms even within the confines of the chamber. Lu Xing was enjoying the chamber, relishing the effect of the intensified gravity, he moved closer to the control panel, Chao Yong, assuming Lu Xing's intentions to quit, however, to his utter surprise, a piercing sound reverberated from outside the chamber. Chao Yong's jaw dropped in disbelief as he witnessed what unfolded before him. Lu Sheng, against all expectations, had increased the gravity from two times to an astounding four times. With his eyes closed, Lu Sheng basked in the enhanced gravitational force. He gracefully knelt on one knee, causing onlookers to mistakenly believe that he had reached his limit. But then, in a display of sheer audacity, Lu Sheng slowly raised two fingers. As Ling made her way toward her dormitory, she noticed a crowd gathered near the gravity chamber. Intrigued by the commotion, she approached the onlookers, only to find their jaws hanging open in disbelief. Ling's gaze shifted towards the chamber's glass, where she witnessed an astonishing sight, Lu Xing effortlessly performing a handstand on two fingers under the daunting four times gravity. Chao Yong, overwhelmed by a million questions flooding his mind, collapsed to the ground in shock. He struggled to comprehend how Lu Sheng had attained such incredible strength. Clenching his teeth and holding back tears of frustration, Chao Yong raised his hands in disbelief, his mind filled with confusion. After all, hadn't Lu Sheng been sleeping for over a month? Meanwhile, Lu Sheng appeared unfazed by the intensified gravity. As he grew more accustomed to its force, he decided to push himself further, increasing it to five times. Adopting the earth breathing technique, News of Lu Sheng's remarkable feat spread like wildfire, drawing more and more people to the gravity chamber. Even Sassy hurriedly made his way toward the scene. Among the growing crowd was Yang, along with numerous others. Lu Sheng deemed the five times gravity to be meeting his training standards, but he needs more pressure, more intense that would push him to his absolute limits. With a resolute stride, Lu Sheng approached the control panel once again, his actions drawing the attention and curiosity of the crowd. Many believed that Lu Sheng had reached his limit. But to their astonishment, Lu Sheng's hand descended upon the control panel, unhesitatingly hammering the green button two more times. Snowy sat frustrated in the control room, disheartened by the increasing number of students quitting the camp. In just a month, numerous participants had already left, unable to withstand the challenges presented. Qin, sensing her distress, handed her a cold and refreshing beverage, offering words of solace. They are just spoiled brats. It's only natural for some to falter. If they can't handle the challenges here, how can they face the real monsters on the battlefield, he remarked, attempting to ease Snowy's concerns. He added that the overall quality of this year's students was quite impressive. As Qin's eyes drifted toward the screen, his expression suddenly changed. Something remarkable had occurred, the gravity chamber record had been shattered. Snowy's curiosity was piqued, and she cast her gaze toward the screen, assuming it would be Chao Yong who had achieved this feat however, to her utter surprise, it was Lu Sheng, attempting an astounding eight times gravity. The shock of this revelation caused Snowy to inadvertently shatter the glass in her hands. Utilizing her ability to control liquids and shattered glass, she prevented the fragments from falling to the ground. Both Snowy and Qin were left dumbfounded, unsure of what the shit is happening, but one thing became clear, Lu Sheng was the person they were looking for.
Lu Sheng took a deep breath and unleashed the power of the Divine Pluto technique. Instantly, he felt a surge of psychic energy coursing through his veins, akin to a vibrant purple thread creating another heart within his body. As this ethereal heart merged with his own, his entire body was pulsating with purple energy. Flowing harmoniously throughout every inch of his body. As Lu Xing activated the Divine Pluto technique, his body felt lighter, as if the burdens of gravity had been lifted. Lu Xing took a few steps forward, ready to push himself to his true limits. However, as his fingers made contact with the control panel, the glass walls of the chamber began to crack under the immense pressure that emanated within the chamber. Spectators felt the sudden weight of this force bearing down upon them, compelling them to kneel and rendering them unable to lift their heads. Inside the chamber, Lu Xing found himself almost glued to the ground, the floor beneath him shattering into pieces. The gravity intensified, causing his bones to tremble and his blood to freeze. The person that yearns for a change of the future, who brings hope to humanity isn't those who practice the finest martial arts or possess boundless resources. It is a person who possesses the relentless drive to push themselves to the very limits of their capabilities. Summoning every ounce of strength within him, Lu Xing rises to his feet, the sheer force of his ascent shatters the ground beneath him, setting off a breathtaking shockwave that reverberates throughout the chamber. Outside of the chamber, onlookers find themselves unable to withstand the pressure, their heads bowed low, unable to move a single muscle, Yang gazes upon Lu Sheng, her mind filled with awe and admiration. Lu Sheng has returned. As the door to the gravity chamber swung open, a hushed silence fell upon the onlookers, who instinctively made way for Lu Sheng. Their fear rendered them speechless, their eyes filled with a mixture of awe and reverence. Amidst the crowd, a girl stepped forward, her cheeks blushed, she handed Lu Xing a towel, Lu Xing graciously accepted the towel, expressing his gratitude with a smile. The girl high-fived her friend, sharing a moment of excitement. Lu Xing, now outside the chamber, checked his point's balance, discovering that he had been rewarded for breaking the gravity chamber record. His new balance stood at an impressive 4,335 points, a stark contrast to the majority of candidates who had single-digit scores. Lu Sheng was bawling with four digits, a satisfied smile spreading across his face. He knew that with his substantial points, he could enjoy another lavish feast. And so, the onlookers, inspired by his triumph, followed in pursuit. Yang, standing among the crowd, looked on in awe. The figure before her, Lu Sheng, was like a king, reigning supreme above everyone else. Lu Sheng didn't head toward the cafeteria as expected. Instead, he made his way to the agility room, within the dimly lit room, Meng Jin showcased his incredible speed and agility, effortlessly evading a barrage of laser beams. However, a laser grazed his arm, leaving a small mark. Undeterred, he completed the second stage with an 87% score. The system promptly congratulated him, highlighting that he had surpassed more than half of all martial artists. This achievement would be showcased on the global terminal of the prestigious Martial Arts Association for everyone to witness. The score sucks ass, but Meng Jin still took immense pride in his score, after all, he believed he was already ahead of the pack due to his natural talent and personal training under the renowned Major Qin. With a sense of anticipation, Meng Jin exited the room, expecting a chorus of applause and words of praise. However, what awaited him was a haunting silence. The absence of any reaction or acknowledgement left him bewildered and disheartened. He glanced over to the opposite side, where a crowd of people had gathered, including the two instructors. Determined to find out what was happening, he hurriedly approached one of the spectators, grabbing the man's shoulder and inquiring about the commotion. The man, visibly annoyed by the interruption, reluctantly responded that he was watching Lu Sheng. He burst out in laughter, saying what y'all expecting from a sloth that's been sleeping for a month. The man narrowed his eyes, was not going to let Meng Jin he get away with his disrespect, the room suddenly turned crimson red. Signaling that all the laser launchers had been activated at full power. In the midst of the chaos, Lu Xing found himself standing alone in the center of the room, surrounded by a mesmerizing array of thousands of laser beams. Unleashing his latent psychic powers, Lu Sheng tapped into his heightened intuition, allowing him to anticipate the trajectory of each laser attack. 
he effortlessly dodged the deadly beams, moving with an elegance and grace that seemed almost otherworldly. After knowing this was Lu Xing's first time entering the agility room, and breaking the ten-time gravity record before arriving here, overwhelmed by the revelation, Meng Jinha found himself collapsing to the ground, his body and soul filled with a strange mixture of exhaustion and disbelief. How was it possible for someone to emerge so strong after spending a month sleeping? Meng Jin couldn't help but feel invisible as the attention of everyone in the room remained fixed solely on Lu Sheng. Snowy, with her keen observation, couldn't believe that it was Lu Sheng's first time in the agility room. His movements were too precise, almost as if he could predict the attacks before they even happened. Intrigued, Snowy gestured discreetly, conjuring a small purple orb in her hands. Qin, catching sight of Snowy's actions, glanced over, but Snowy quickly dismissed the orb, she have already tested Lu Sheng, who didn't have any psychic power. Moments later, Lu Sheng successfully cleared stage 2 and advanced to stage 3. A breathtaking sight awaited him as thousands of golden balls were launched simultaneously, each bouncing off the floor and changing direction unpredictably. Lu Sheng knew he needs to step up his game. Qin's keen eyes couldn't help but recognize that Lu Sheng has reached the nuanced level in his agility technique, even among seasoned level 4 and 5 veterans on the battlefield, only a few could attain such mastery. Qin himself had achieved nuance level by the age of 22, and Snowy had reached it by the age of 25. Qin was well aware that he himself was a speed talent, but Lu Sheng, at the young age of 18, showcased an exceptional level of agility despite not being a speed talented martial artist. Lu Xing found himself facing a daunting challenge as he reached the 15% mark in stage 3. Using his psychic power alone to predict the attacks was becoming increasingly difficult. He swiftly switched his breathing technique to the wind breathing technique. As he tapped into the power of the wind, a surge of speed coursed through his veins, propelling him forward with such astonishing velocity that most onlookers couldn't even track his movements with their naked eyes. In a remarkable display of skill, Lu Sheng conquered stage 3 in a matter of moments. Qin, having witnessed Lu Sheng's impressive feat, turned his back and began to walk away thinking this was Lu Sheng's limit. But Snowy said no. As Qin turned back, the daunting stage 4 of the challenge commenced. Even Qin himself had only recently begun tackling this stage, so he was taken aback by what unfolded before him. In the room, a peculiar machine emerged from the floor and ascended into the air. Lu Sheng, momentarily caught off guard, suddenly found himself confronted by over a dozen tiny spears launching upward, creating a dense web of laser beams descending from above. Within seconds, Lu Sheng was ensnared, trapped inside the intricate network. However, a surge of otherworldly energy emanated from Lu Sheng's body as he activated his divine Pluto technique. With this powerful ability, he created an invisible barrier encompassing him, forming a protective sphere. Within this sphere, time seemed to come to a standstill. Those knowledgeable in psychic abilities referred to this phenomenon as, time senses, where the perception of time is altered or suspended. Snowy was left utterly speechless, witnessing Lu Sheng achieve a feat that typically only level 3 psychic masters could accomplish. The glass barrier in front of them began to crack and ultimately shattered into pieces. A smile crept onto Snowy's face. Eager to put him to the test, Snowy tapped into her own psychic abilities, causing vibrant purple lines to radiate from her body. These lines coalesced into a giant version of herself, with even her boobies features enlarged. Qin, filled with astonishment, watched the scene unfold before him. Snowy had summoned her formidable doppelganger into the chamber, intending to gauge Lu Xing's abilities. However, Lu Xing's attention swiftly shifted toward the doppelganger. With a composed demeanor, he swung his arms skillfully, and in an instant, Snowy's doppelganger dissipated into thin air. The impact of this realization hit Snowy like a hammer to the head, leaving her breathless. She knew at that moment that Lu Sheng was not only a psychic master but potentially even stronger than herself. Lu Sheng had pushed himself to his limits, achieving an impressive 56% completion rate in stage 4. His score surpassed a staggering 97% of all participants, causing the crowd to erupt in excitement. They recognized that they might have just witnessed the rise of a legend. On the sidelines, tears streamed down Meng Jin's face as he faced the harsh reality. 
Despite his remarkable performance, Lu Sheng remained humble and acknowledged that there were still 3% of individuals faster than him. He felt a sense of humbleness and understood the need to continue honing his skills. The two instructors approached Lu Sheng, extending their congratulations for his record-breaking achievements. Snowy wondered where his next destination would be, whether it would be the combat training chamber or the psychic training chamber. However, to everyone's surprise, Lu Sheng shook his head and glanced at the menu item for dinner. He expressed his desire to head to the cafeteria instead. Three hours later, Lu Sheng was summoned to the control room, where the two instructors awaited him. They wanted to conduct some simple tests on him, including checking his blood energy levels. Each dorm had a designated needle for this purpose, but to their astonishment, the needle could not penetrate Lu Xing's body. Snowy reached into her clothes, seemingly unfazed by the surprising turn of events. She retrieved a golden needle from her chest pocket, a needle typically reserved for level 5 martial artists. Not sure why she had a needle in her chest pocket, anyway. Let's refocus on the story. Lu Xing extended his hands, allowing Snowy to extract a sample of his blood for testing. The results revealed that Lu Xing possessed a blood energy level of 124.65, indicating his proficiency as a level 3 martial artist. Qin was astonished by this test, as it had been over a decade since he had encountered such a young martial artist at level 3. Moving on to the battle strength test, Lu Xing assumed his attack stance, transitioning to the fire breathing technique. He combined it with the 8x stellar technique and unleashed a punch with full force. The power behind his strike measured an astonishing 271,920, nearing the level of a martial artist at level 5 in terms of battle strength. Qin couldn't contain his excitement and tapped Lu Sheng on the shoulder, congratulating him on his graduation from the camp. He informed Lu Sheng that he now had the freedom to pursue his own path. Just as Lu Sheng was about to leave, Snowy stood up, signaling that there was another test to be conducted. She presented a floating cube, a rare and special mineral discovered a century ago, capable of testing one's psychic strength. Snowy conducted the test using the floating cube, Snowy's psychic strength registered at 143.2, and her psychic purity was 4.2. Intrigued, Lu Xing placed his hand on top of the cube, and a dazzling golden aura emanated from his body. A powerful beam of golden light shot out from the cube as it detected his presence. To their astonishment, Lu Xing's psychic strength was measured at 113.5, slightly lower than Snowy's. However, his psychic purity was in surprising 20.3, five times that of Snowy's. Each point of purity was achieved through great determination, comparable to repeatedly bending a towel until it becomes the size of a coin. Curious about Lu Xing's rapid progress, Snowy inquired about his mentor. Lu Xing admitted that he indeed had a teacher who had imparted a unique psychic technique to him. When asked how long it had been since he awakened his talent, Lu Xing revealed that it had only been three months. This revelation left both Snowy and Qin speechless. Through their conversation, Lu Xing learned about the existence of an association for psychic masters. It became clear that awakening psychic talent was a rare occurrence, with only a small percentage of individuals could awaken a talent, and out of these people, only 1% could awaken psychic talent, making it an exceptionally scarce phenomenon. Snowy, understanding the potential in Lu Sheng, made a generous offer. She lowered her shirt and revealed a pair of boing boing. And revealed a necklace emitting a vibrant purple light. She extended an invitation for Lu Sheng to join the association, explaining that it would provide him with valuable resources and support for his training. To authenticate his membership, Snowy removed the necklace and handed it over to Lu Sheng as a token telling him to bring it to the association. Lu Xing realized that he needed a way to dispel any suspicion surrounding his rapid progress. He decided to credit his achievements to his mentor, emphasizing that he had never met his mentor in person but had received extensive teachings from him. Snowy believed his explanation, understanding that sometimes mentors preferred to remain anonymous. As the conversation continued, Qin handed over a card containing 5 million which included the rewards for Lu Sheng's exceptional performance. Lu Sheng stood frozen to the ground, causing Snowy to mistakenly assume that he found the amount insufficient. She explained that it was the maximum they could apply for and that a significant portion of the budget had already been spent on food. 
Snowy estimated that Lu Xing's meals alone had likely cost over seven to eight million. Lu Xing felt a sense of sadness, realizing that he might never be able to afford such extravagant meals again. Snowy emphasized that although the amount of money might not be significant, it was a token of appreciation from the Eastern Military District. Lu Xing examined the bank card and asked if this was a recruitment offer. Qin snapped his fingers and nodded in confirmation. Snowy then revealed that someone as gifted as Lu Sheng was destined for the battlefield. She explained that martial artists were granted privileges, but there were also costs associated with them. Knowing that Lu Sheng's path would eventually lead to the battlefield, they wanted him to consider joining the Eastern Military District first. Qin playfully hugged Lu Sheng's shoulder and grinned, mentioning one advantage of the Eastern Military District, they were known for having the most beautiful female soldiers, with long legs, pretty faces, and giant boing boings. Take Snowy as a reference. Before he could finish his sentence, Qin was sent flying, likely due to Snowy's swift reaction. Blushing slightly, Snowy continued, stating that they wanted Lu Sheng to represent the camp and attend the Eastern Provincial Military Star Selection. The purpose of the talent camp was to identify individuals with exceptional potential. Snowy asked Lu Sheng if he understood the significance of becoming a military star. Lu Sheng nodded, acknowledging that a military star is a person that are likely to become a future military general and a renowned level 7 martial artist in the future. He understood that only one person from the eastern provinces would be chosen each year. Without hesitation, Lu Sheng agreed to attend the Eastern Provincial Military Star Selection. Indeed, living in an era where the fate of the entire human race hangs in the balance demands extraordinary courage and determination. The task of single-handedly changing the course of history requires a Herculean effort and igniting the flames of a great conflagration. Lu Sheng, driven by his ambition and sense of responsibility, is willing to take on this monumental role. Qin dropped a subtle hint that the Eastern Military District held the key to all the coveted rewards. Sensing the opportunity to secure greater recognition, Lu Xing realized he needed to showcase even more of his untapped potential. With several months left until the election, Lu Xing asked if he could stay in the camp in the meantime, he got the confirmation, and swiftly exited the room, leaving Qin chuckling to himself, fully aware that Lu Xing's ulterior motive for staying behind was simply because of the meals. As Lu Xing embarked on his departure, Qin and Snowy watched him with a mixture of admiration and relief. They had always been the shining stars of their respective times, but this time, a peculiar sensation washed over them, the rare feeling of envy towards someone else's extraordinary talent. Deep down, they both recognized that Lu Sheng was destined for greatness, he would never be ordinary and was poised to reshape the very fabric of this era. Lu Xing made his way to the Martial Artist Association in the bustling Whitewater City. His purpose was clear, to submit his important documents and meet Chairman Xiao on the sixth floor. As he approached the office, the distant echoes of Chairman Zhao's fervent voice reached his ears. The secretary, struggling to block out the noise, welcomed Lu Sheng and guided him into the room. Inside, a man in a sharp suit rose to his feet, extending a cordial greeting to Lu Sheng. The man's gaze lingered on Lu Sheng, then slyly glanced back at Chairman Xiao with a smirk, teasingly remarking, Don't be too upset, Chairman. Not everyone possesses the talent of my granddaughter. It soon became apparent that he was none other than Ling's grandfather, proudly displaying her photo as his phone's wallpaper. Chairman Zhao's gaze bore into Lu Sheng, his eyes filled with curiosity and anger. He demanded an explanation for Lu Sheng's return before the completion of the camp. In a composed manner, Lu Xing calmly responded that he had come to deliver the documents requested by Instructor Snowy. The man in the suit grew increasingly suspicious, wondering what kind of documents would warrant the attention of a chairman in a relatively small city like Whitewater City. Chairman Xiao seized the document, tearing it out forcefully from its envelope, holding it in his hands, he examined its contents. His eyes widened in disbelief as he delved deeper into the text, as he continued to read, Chairman Zhao's expression transformed from shock to a mix of surprise and delight. With utmost care, he placed the document back in the envelope, ensuring its safety. A broad smile then stretched across Chairman Zhao's face. Instructor Snowy had specifically requested a call with Chairman Zhao, concerned that he might question the authenticity of the documents. Chairman Zhao, 
wearing a smug expression, confidently assured everyone presents that he unquestionably believed in their validity. However, since Instructor Snowy had made the request, he saw no reason to decline the call. Within moments, they established a video chat connection, and Snowy's face appeared on the screen. The man in the suit couldn't believe his eyes, it was truly her. Shortly after, Ling heard her grandfather's voice and eagerly approached the screen. However, her excitement was short-lived as Snowy promptly scolded her for her shortcomings and imposed a tenfold increase in her training load for the day. Chairman Xiao reassured Snowy that he had indeed received the documents and would proceed to stamp them immediately. At that moment, Snowy unveiled a significant news, Lu Sheng would be representing the entire province in the upcoming Eastern District Military Star Selection. Considering his exceptional performance that surpassed everyone at the camp, there was no longer a need for him to attend the camp itself. The man in the suit sat frozen in his seat, his mind racing as he recalled the monster Ling had mentioned earlier. It suddenly dawned on him that Lu Sheng was in fact that very monster Ling had warned him about. Snowy's scolding of Ling continued unabated, emphasizing the importance of overcoming challenges and the necessity of surpassing Lu Sheng. Overwhelmed with emotion, Ling began to cry, confessing that she didn't want to defeat him. She believed she couldn't match his strength, but she could always find solace in running away from him. As the call drew to a close, Snowy informed Lu Sheng that she had gathered the necessary materials for crafting a psychic weapon as he requested. She promised to send him the price and item list soon, urging him to swiftly undergo the psychic assessment, allowing him to make the purchases himself. With those words, the call ended. Chairman Xiao leaped out of his seat, gripping Lu Xing's shoulders in disbelief. The mention of psychic assessments left him filled with immense pride, knowing that Lu Xing possessed such extraordinary talents. Meanwhile, the suited man grew increasingly embarrassed by the turn of events. Chairman Xiao personally accompanied Lu Sheng out of the building, offering to drive him home. He even extended an invitation for Lu Sheng to visit his house, expressing his desire to cook for him. Lu Sheng smiled and said he will. As Lu Sheng rode in the taxi on his way home, he pondered the notion that only the strong were truly respected. The taxi driver, intrigued by Chairman Zhao's evident display of respect towards Lu Sheng, couldn't help but inquire about it. Lu Xing smiled modestly and replied, Chairman Xiao is respectful to everyone. However, their conversation was abruptly interrupted when a massive signboard from the Red Mountain Martial Arts School unexpectedly dropped into the middle of the road. This martial arts school was a familiar place for Lu Sheng, where he often tested his battle strength. The sudden appearance of the signboard sparked curiosity and Lu Xing exited the taxi to take a look. As they observed the commotion inside the martial arts school, a few middle-aged women, in their forties or fifties, clutching their baskets of vegetables, stood near the entrance and whispered among themselves, their mouths ceaselessly chattering. When they looked up, they noticed a tall and slender young man, with a pretty face and upright posture standing before them, seemingly appearing out of nowhere. The young man had a clean and handsome appearance, and he was dragging a suitcase as if he had just returned from a trip. His pair of jet-black eyes were clear and profound, sparkling like crystals. Lu Sheng inquired if the martial arts school had been experiencing such disturbances recently. The mid-aged women were momentarily taken aback and replied, It has been like this for the past two weeks. Every day people come to challenge the school, one group after another. Both sides have inflicted numerous injuries, and we heard that even the owner of the school has been hurt. The scene inside the entrance was even worse than outside. The reception desk of the martial arts school had been kicked over and smashed onto the floor. A pile of decorative indoor potted plants lay in ruins, with shattered pots and soil scattered everywhere, creating a chaotic mess. The main hall of the martial arts hall was surrounded by a large group of people, seemingly locked in a standoff. Hong, the owner of the school, appeared to be seriously injured, his face and lips slightly pale. He occasionally reached out to clutch his chest in discomfort. Half kneeling on the ground beside him was a woman known to Lu Sheng, Ni Shuang, a familiar face from the Red Mountain Martial Arts School. There weren't many people from the Red Mountain Martial Arts School present, but almost everyone displayed some form of injury. 
Some had bruised and swollen faces, while others had their hands or feet wrapped in casts and bandages. Standing across from them was a tall man in a gray suit, nearly two meters in height. He had a buzz-cut hairstyle, dark skin, and muscles that resembled solid rocks. His fierce appearance, accompanied by a glint of intensity in his eyes, made him resemble an exuding dominance and intimidation. Ni Shuang pointed at the man in the suit and cursed. As a fourth-level martial artist, you dare to take advantage of her father's injury to challenge our school. Hong swayed unsteadily as he spoke. Our martial arts school has already agreed not to accept new students for a year. Why would you do this? Lin laughed heartily and replied, Since your Red Mountain Martial Arts School dares to hang up a sign, you should be prepared to have it smashed at any time. As he spoke, a surge of aura emanated from Lin causing the faces of the Red Mountain Martial Arts School group to slightly change, and they took a few steps back. Hong slowly stood up, nodding. He's right. Since the sign is up, we must have the ability to defend it. Hong had arrived in Whitewater City twenty years ago, alone and relying solely on his own fists to establish this foundation. Suddenly, Hong stood up abruptly and began to gather his strength, with his existing injuries, this exertion aggravated his condition, causing him to cough violently. Seeing this, Ni Shuang quickly reached out to support him, her face filled with worry. Hong extended his hand to stop her, shaking his head to indicate that he was fine. However, Lin, who was nearby, laughed at the scene. An 18-year-old second-level martial artist! Ha! Hong can never teach such a prodigy! Ni Shuang attempted to explain. Lu Sheng is not his student, just a member. Lin forcefully stomped on the ground and shouted, But y'all use that kid named Lu Sheng to snatch over half of the business from our martial arts schools. Ni Shuang stood in front of her father, stating that the students joined willingly. Lin waved his hand dismissively, showing no concern. He had come today to dismantle the martial arts school so that the students would go back. Ni Shuang seethed with anger, unable to utter a word. She assumed a defensive stance, preparing for battle, while Lin displayed a repugnant expression as if he were grabbing something in the air with both hands. Hong's expression changed as he told Ni Shuang that she was no match for Lin. Lin was a fourth-level martial artist, and even if Hong hadn't been injured, at best, they would be evenly matched. Ni Shuang argued that she was a third-level martial artist, and even though Lin was at the fourth level, their father-daughter combination might not necessarily lose. Lin waved his hand provocatively, taunting her. Ni Shuang glared at him and coldly declared, Once I bring you down later, I want you to carry the sign of our Red Mountain Martial Arts School and parade through the streets. Lin laughed faintly, his eyes emanating a cold gleam. In the next second, Lin's figure suddenly vanished. Hong shouted for caution, and then two figures fiercely collided. One figure was forcefully thrown back seven to eight meters, crashing heavily into the wall. At this moment, Lin was completely different from before, almost like two different people. Hong coughed up blood and his hands trembled, his face filled with astonishment. Lin had unexpectedly broken through to become a fifth-level martial artist. Lin laughed heartily, his overwhelming power and terror making it almost impossible for anyone to catch their breath. Hong's chest heaved heavily as he slowly stood up and spoke, each word enunciated clearly. You want our martial arts school to shut down, don't you? Fine. I'll go to the martial association now and revoke the qualification of our martial arts school. As Hong uttered those words, he seemed to age instantly, as if ten years had passed, even his back hunched over. Ni Shuang's eyes immediately turned red, overwhelmed with self-blame and guilt. Seeing that his goal had been achieved, Lin smiled and spoke. In that case, we'll leave for now. With laughter echoing, he walked towards the entrance. However, at that moment, a voice suddenly emerged from the crowd. Everyone paused and instinctively turned to look. They saw a young man with fair skin and a handsome appearance stepping forward. If the martial arts school that was doing well is now going to close, where am I supposed to train in the future? He said. Ni Shuang instantly recognized the young man's identity and exclaimed, Lu Sheng. Lu Sheng waved to Ni Shuang, and in an instant all eyes were fixed on him, filled with curiosity. 
Lin, on the other hand, had a gleam in his eyes as he assessed Lu Sheng from head to toe. He placed his hand on Lu Sheng's shoulder and chuckled. Don't worry. After Red Mountain Martial Arts School closes, my martial arts school welcomes you. If you join my school, I'll personally teach you the Iron Mountain secret technique. Lin glanced back and commented that the others were all useless, unable to even handle a single strike. He promised that if Lu Sheng joined his martial arts school, he would personally instruct him in the Iron Mountain secret technique, without keeping any secrets. Lu Sheng seemed to become interested. Seeing this, Lin seized the opportunity and continued, The Iron Mountain secret technique is an exclusive technique of the Iron Mountain Martial Arts School. Once mastered, it makes the user invincible. Within the same level martial artists, there are few who can break through his defense. Hong's face darkened, but he was unable to retort with any strength. Lu Sheng inquired further, asking, Why would you teach me such a powerful technique? As Lin felt that Lu Sheng seemed somewhat intrigued, his smile grew wider, and he hurriedly replied, Of course I would be willing. As long as you join our Iron Mountain Martial Arts School and become my disciple, I will wholeheartedly impart my knowledge to you. Lu Sheng took a couple of steps forward, calmly looking at Lin, and casually asked, So, how do you plan to teach me? Lin furrowed his brow thinking to himself why this kid had so many questions. However, considering Lu Sheng's potential, he patiently began to speak. If you join us, I will... Lin's words were cut short. Suddenly, Lu Sheng in front of him vanished. In an instant, a terrifying aura, akin to a volcanic eruption, swept over him. Lin's scalp went numb, and his entire body bristled with fear as an overwhelming sense of life and death crisis surged from within him. He roared fiercely, his muscles blackening and swelling, and his body suddenly expanded. Then he forcefully thrust both palms forward. Lu Sheng gave him a thumbs up and said, Impressive, indeed tough, before gently punching him, causing a series of bone-cracking sounds. The terrifying power contained in Lu Sheng's fist erupted, sending Lin's body flying backward. With a resounding crash, he smashed into the wall, leaving a deep crater as the entire wall shattered. The crisp footsteps echoed in the silent hall. Lu Sheng walked step by step with a casual posture and an indifferent expression. Looking at the unconscious, eyes rolled back at Lin. He turned his thumb upside down. How do you plan to teach me? By kneeling. At that moment, the entire martial arts gym fell into a dead silence. Lin's students were in disbelief, their jaws dropping. They quickly ran over to help him up and swiftly left the martial arts school. The once invincible and domineering Lin had been blasted into the wall by a single punch. Lu Sheng turned his head and walked towards Ni Shuang, extending his hand to ask if she was all right. Ni Shuang blushed and took Lu Sheng's hand, assuring him that they were fine. Lu Sheng then helped Hong to his feet and advised him not to close down the martial arts school. He said it would be troublesome to find another one far from home. Hong tightly held Lu Sheng's hand, his face filled with excitement. Lu Sheng smiled and remarked that this incident was sort of caused by him. But in a world where martial strength ruled, he told Hong, only the strong will be respected. With everyone in the school's respectful and amazed gazes watching him, he turned around with his suitcase and walked away. Lu Sheng doesn't have any special attachment to Red Mountain Martial Arts School. His main motivation for stepping in was the sponsor fee he received from Ni Shuang a couple of months ago. If Red Mountain Martial Arts School encounters similar situations, Lu Sheng won't intervene. He can protect them once, but he cannot protect them for a lifetime. The two of them looked at Lu Sheng, unable to believe that a fifth-level martial artist was defeated with just one strike. Just three months ago, Lu Sheng had only been a second-level martial artist. Shortly after, Lu Sheng had already reached the doorstep of his home. Lu Sheng opened the door, and the aroma of meat and vegetables filled the air. His mother heard the sound of the door opening and walked out of the kitchen, eager to help him with his luggage. She was delighted to see her son, but when she heard Lu Sheng mention that he had intervened in a fight, her expression immediately changed. She carefully examined Lu Sheng, looking for any signs of injury. However, 
his father interjected, saying that learning martial arts meant standing up against injustice and that Lu Sheng would be eventually going to the battlefield to fight monsters and defend their homeland in the future. The younger sister whispered what kind of meat Lu Sheng had sent over. After consuming the meat, their father's health improved and her blood energy level also increased by 1.1. It seemed more effective than any supplements and she suspected that Lu Sheng had stolen it from the training camp. Lu Sheng pinched his sister's cheek and said that he had earned it himself. Their mother is still worried about whether Lu Sheng's training in the camp was too difficult. However, she brought a large bowl of rice, showing her concern. Their father, on the other hand, had absolute confidence in their child. He said that Lu Sheng would undoubtedly become an extraordinary person, and even if something happens in the future, Lu Sheng will always have his family behind his back. Lu Sheng looked at this scene, and his facial expression gradually softened. He thought to himself that it was for the sake of continuing these ordinary yet heartwarming days that he needed to become stronger, strong enough to protect everything. Lu Sheng sat quietly on the yoga mat in the middle of the room. Soon, he entered a dream state. In the dilapidated streets, the figure of Lu Sheng silently appeared. Corpse after corpse disintegrated into black wisps of smoke and merged into Lu Sheng as he walked along the street, clearing out the zombies. The more zombies he cleared, the more of these black wisps of smoke appeared. The absorption rate couldn't keep up. Suddenly, a level six martial artist zombie appeared, and with a single punch, Lu Sheng shattered the obstructing zombie. His expression remained unchanged as he continued forward. With his current strength, even a level 6 martial artist zombie only required a single punch to eliminate. Lu Sheng soon reached the center of the base where the powerful zombie resided. He wasn't sure if he could handle it now, but he hoped to investigate the situation. Suddenly, a long-haired zombie appeared in the sky. Lu Sheng squinted his eyes, examining the appearance of this zombie. It suddenly charged toward Lu Sheng, who was pushed back a few steps by the powerful shockwave. This zombie had long white hair and wore white martial arts attire. Its eyes lacked focus, other than the skin had a lifeless gray color. It was indistinguishable from a normal person. It was a grand master level zombie. Lu Sheng had absorbed too many memories of battles in a short period of time, and his subconscious urged him to destroy everything. At this moment, the grand master level zombie stood quietly in the distance, as if waiting for something. Lu Sheng took a deep breath, and the rhythm of his breathing subtly changed. He switched to the wind breathing technique, and a faint green light surrounded his body. In a flash, Lu Sheng disappeared from his original position. With a powerful whip kick, he struck the head of the Grand Master Level zombie. However, the zombie remained motionless and didn't even flinch. A look of shock appeared in Lu Sheng's eyes. He felt as if his leg had kicked into an incredibly thick cushion, and all his strength was absorbed and completely dissipated. He didn't expect the Grand Master to be this powerful. The extent of its strength was unimaginable. After a tentative strike, Lu Sheng no longer held back. He used his tenfold stellar technique, executed the perfect boxing technique, and employed the flame breathing technique. But no matter what kind of attack he unleashed, he couldn't break through the defense of this zombie. It was a wall, a mountain. Lu Sheng sensed that there seemed to be an invisible barrier surrounding the Grand Master level zombie. All his attacks landed on this barrier, and almost 99% of the force was directly dissipated. This was the power field of a Grand Master, and its strength exceeded Lu Sheng's expectations. He was on the verge of running out of ideas. Now he understood why there was such a huge disparity in status between the 6th and 7th level's martial artists, despite only a one-level difference. The 7th level could be called a Grand Master, while the 6th level could only be considered a martial artist. It was simply because the gap between the two was too vast. However, it seemed that this zombie didn't actively attack Lu Sheng. He felt a bit helpless. The Grand Master level zombie didn't seem to consider him a worthy opponent, merely passively defending against his attacks without launching any counterattacks. Otherwise, he would have been killed on the spot. Lu Sheng felt a surge of retreat in his heart, 
but at the same time he couldn't let go of his unwillingness. Suddenly, he thought of something crucial. If he could defeat this Grand Master-level zombie, he would be able to access the memories of the Grand Master.